Hello, 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 Chuck Mice here. So, bit of a show uh, for you tonight. Hope you're digging the music, get the likes in, and um, there's no point in fanning about it. Let's just get stuck into it, shall we? So, who do we have today? Well, I would say a rose between two thorns. And, yeah, that's about right. So, we have. London Viva and the Holster. There we are. Evening, ladies and gentlemen. I've come up a bit right looking at my screen. Yeah, yeah. I've given you a bit of a uh, bit of a tan there. You don't need to. I don't live in Roswell. <laughs> Yet. Yeah. Let's see where we are. But one of the first things I said to you was UFO. Well, yeah. I said UFO too, but you didn't take it off. Well, I, I know the letter F was in there somewhere. Yes. Anyway, how are you, gentlemen? Good to see you. Uh, I haven't seen you since, what, ages now, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a while. It has been. It's good to see you the other side of the camera, therefore I'm not standing right next to you. Yeah. <laughs> because at least you're sitting in a room that's got carpet in it, so you can't bitch for one. Yeah, and it's got red carpet. It has red carpet. Okay, I'm very quiet, apparently. I don't know why. Oh, okay. Let's uh, bump you up. There we go. Should be okay. Okay, so can everybody hear uh, Les? I'll just mute him anyway. <laughs> uh, yes, don't forget to press mute now. Or do, or do what I did on Saturday, which is take the other side of the hall so you couldn't hear him. No, a little warning before I start the show. The opinions shown in this show today, uh, our own personal opinions, mm -hmm. uh, we, we do totally share them, but, you know, they're our opinions. And, um, yeah, what a weekend. Chris, what did you think of your first vape show? I, I thought the, the range uh, of the products and uh, the facilities were top notch. There's a flying pig behind you. Uh, absolutely, yes. It was, it was, it was the same show we went to. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the show I went to before I went to the London Vape Show. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you went in the wrong door at Olympia. You went to the s &M show first, didn't you? Uh, uh, absolutely. But I, re I misread it, and I went in all my best M&S clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone would think that was scripted. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, all I did was um, apologise to Chris right the way yeah. through the show. Because you compare last year's show to this year's, and absolutely no comparison. Good grief, there's an old face I haven't seen for a long time. Mr. Magoo, welcome back. Yeah, grab a seat. Yes, everybody grab a seat, because this is likely to get interesting. It is, very. Even though I'm going to be on my best behaviour, because after three days I finally calm down. I, I find that highly unlikely. Oh no, I have, I've calmed down a lot. Have you? Yeah. Contacted the, solic yeah. Contacted the solicitors? And... I was going to say, I was going to say the show was uh, almost a knockout. It's a knockout, yeah. And that's the tooth, the whole tooth and nothing but the tooth. But the tooth yes, yeah. thank you, yes, yes, yes. <sighs> well, I did, I did visit the dentist on Tuesday and um, she did it say, oh, so it looks like your gum has been bleeding. I'm mm -hmm. like, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to see the video evidence? Because I'm pretty sure quite a few vloggers caught it. Oh, I think it was. And it wasn't many people in the way either. Because there wasn't... You, if you looked at the, the, some of the videos that had gone up, like I was watching uh, Dean's video earlier, mm -hmm. and it was like, was there really that few people there? There must have been that few people there because we could actually see you at the front of the stage. You could, you could. Well, I was like tucked out the way, like, but you know, you could see me at the front of the tucked stage. Tucked up right in the front, just in case they threw anything heavy, so you could duck. Well, I'll, I'll catch, yeah. I'll catch it. 
But they managed to dodge a lot of the bear liquids. I was going to say the panda bear liquids. If only there was more of that thrown out. I don't know what you put against bear liquids. It's good stuff. The first 600 bottles, yeah. <laughs> it's bloody good stuff if you want to clean toilets, you know, degrease windows, maybe unseason engine. I've got to say, the only decent one is polar bear. That's the only decent one of the, of the five. You see, you didn't catch the decent stuff, you see, because if you'd have caught the stuff in the boxes, you would have got naked fish. I did get some naked fish. And a lot of the stuff I was getting, I was like, oh there was people next to me. I was, I was, just, I was just giving them the stuff that I was catching because there was just so much being thrown out. They could have easily, you know, the bags that we had when we walked in, the little blue ones that contained one bottle of bear oh, liquid. Oh, oh, you mean the goodie bag? The goodie bag with one bottle in. With a 10 mil bottle of bear liquid and a voucher for a free 10 mil bottle of CBD. Yeah. And see, that was it. See, what they could have done is like put like 10 or 12 bottles of liquid in the bag and said, here mm -hmm. you are, come to the stage, grab a bag. And, 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 and in, in some of the bags, they could have put little slips of paper with yeah, but go, come golden ticket. Liquid. If you'd have walked through the door, they should have given you a dustbin and just filled it up. See, I've, I've only got the three bare because I had to throw the ones with blood away. <laughs> it was uh, the Sunday, the floor was like an ice rink after they threw oh. it out. That was a health and safety thing right there. Yes, well, we can get on to that. We can. Yeah, it's good so, they've got vape finder written on them. Yeah. Because the only person that's going to escape criticism out of the whole weekend is me. Everybody else is getting criticised. No, 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 no. You could have done with a shave. Chris. Hello, Chris. How, what's, the, what's the scores on the doors? Oh. Hello, yes, we always like to... St oh, the next word is erudite. Uh, Good job it's not uh, erudite. Uh, You'd be, stu you be stuck then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's day 162 in the uh, Big Brother household. And what's the savings? Uh, uh, and I haven't actually done it because... Uh, I've been trying to install windows. Give me, give me five minutes. Yeah. And I'll find my uh, my vape. Day one, <laughs> sixty-two in the Big Brother house, and Chunk's still relieving himself in the sink. <sighs> I'm, not, I'm not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so we've um, yeah we had a, we had a great. I think the best day was Saturday where we spent three, four hours talking just amongst ourselves. That was the best part of the show. Well, we just completely ignored the fact there was a vape, uh, vape show going on and just found a table up the back and just sat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where we, where we were in, like, the empty two-third of the room and the vape show was in the other two-thirds of the room. Did you get a show guide? I did. I got three. I, I got one to send to Conry. I only found out there was a show guide on Devil's Vlog. They were on every single stand. And there was a big and there was big boxes at the front door. It's well, a tell you what, if it, you want a good laugh. It's a thrilling read. <laughs> if you went to um the lot on the front that were doing the C B D and all that, I forget what their name was. The first booth the first big booth that oh, was there. Psycho Bunny. Psycho Bunny, that was it. They had copies of this laid out on their boot. I mean this one. And it wasn't until this morning that um, I decided to have a flick through. Oh, here we go. I mean that's how engrossing the show was. I didn't bother reading any of the material. Didn't even find a show guide. Please. And there was something that caught me, and I, I should have bookmarked it in the bloody magazine, but I forgot to do it. This is the time where you can don your tin hats and um, get ready for the rest of the show. Oh, has Liz, uh, Liz, Liz started? He takes a little wind to wind up and uh, get it full fun. Right. Uh, out to page. Not that they've got page numbers in the bloody thing either because they're that useless. We can't count. 60, 61, 62, 63. Page 64. There's an article. On the London Vape Show. This is how screwed up it is. That white box 
box. It says booths are selling this box. Reserve yours today. Yeah, check out the floor plan. Yeah, but it says on there, booths are selling out fast. Maybe that was next door or next year. Are they still selling for last year? Must be. It must be. So, Chris. So, ladies and gentlemen in chat, I will say that I will have an opinion, but I'm toning myself down. I'm being a good boy because this is Chunk Show, not me. And as people know that when I get going, I normally take over and I'm not going to do that tonight. No, no, it's cool. So, Chris, what's the scores on the doors? Okay, 162 days. And uh, the, the savings are £499.05, and five pence, so weirdly that, enough. That's creeping up now, isn't it? Yeah. Because, yeah. You could have bought all the berry liquid on Saturday for that. <laughs> They had a brilliant offer on bear liquid. Buy one, get three thousand free. <laughs> I'm, I'm drinking heavily. I've, I've got, I've got three bottles to the side ready, and I got the fridge full as well. I'm okay. I'll be there. I'll be fine. But I think okay. I worked out why there was no carpet. Go on then. You know they were lobbing all the e-liquid out, and the bo bottles were fracturing on the floor. The knew what was going to happen. Yeah, but the thing is, right. They're saving money for Disney on Ice next weekend. They don't need to freeze the floor. <laughs> it was the course of the year show, wouldn't it? It was. It, it looked like, like I said, it looked like a, a warehouse. They could have held it in a warehouse. For all intents and purposes, it was a warehouse. Hmm. I have to agree with Dino's comments, and I have to agree with Chris Empire Vapeco's comments. It looked like a car boot zone. Mm. And it felt like a car boot set. Because there was no effort made whatsoever to even make it look attractive. Mm. I, See, know I don't know if I'm lucky enough or unlucky enough, but I went to the first one last year as well. It was good. I enjoyed that last year. And last year, it was very basic, very intimate, and I thought, it's the first event. You didn't expect it to go off like a rocket. It was supposed. It was going to be small. It was going to be slightly disorganised. Let's give it a yeah. chance the next year. Well, there were more people there last year, weren't they? But it's the first time I've ever seen a vape show actually get worse the second year. They normally get better. Not any show gets worse. Even Vape Jam, as much as I hate that event with a passion. The first one was a nice show, because funnily enough, it was in the same hall at Olympia that we were in Saturday, but it had proper booths, it was nicely laid out, and it was nice and friendly, nice and intimate, you got to chat with people and everything else. Second year, it exploded because it went to XL, and it got huge. Vape Finder, you've had two events in exactly the same place, in exactly the same hall, within two weeks of each other, or a year and two weeks of each other. And organization shows and that show was no way organized <clears throat> that was just thrown together and it was like let's hope it works anyway talking about booths getting bigger and exploding chris <laughs> what a segue that was what did you think of the the number of uh, vendors there you know because from before I, i'd said how, how busy it was there were booths around the outside and what did you think about uh, the general atmosphere? Do you know, I, I don't think of, of any industry, I haven't exactly been to too many of these events. And uh, it did, it seemed, I think, as Les is uh, subtly putting it, that uh, there was people who'd never had a beer in a brewery before that was involved in the organising. And... Uh, that that it, it felt like the first time they'd done it and the room was too big for that number of uh, uh, booths. Because I, I, I was kind of expecting more uh, hardware, more maybe demonstrations, a bit more, uh, more of a professional edge to it really. You know, there might be people talking about it. There might have been some, like, 
b builders there, some uh, whether they, yeah, you know, I wanted to see some people doing some coils or doing building some mech mods or something. Um, yeah, you know, maybe maybe product talks like the difference between the different tanks or something like that. That's what I was expecting. You know, I, I went to uh, a motor show uh, last year, and uh, and you know you had people doing professional demonstrations, etc. And uh, but this, uh, you know, the 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 area where we were sitting there at the back near the £3.30 for a small bottle of uh, juice. Ooh, ooh, that was a bit lumpy. Uh, it's like the 500 ml of mineral water. Hey, yeah. Um, it, well, the fact there was lots of empty booths back there as well, it just, it really, uh, it felt like a poorly organised school, school fete. Fate, uh, fate being the word. Yeah. Which was what four or five days before the event, there was supposed to be fifty plus vendors there. That was because if you check the, the the floor plan, and I say the floor plan that was very cleverly hidden on the website, because you had to click on one of the five vendors that showed under the vendors bit to find floor plan. Like okay. that, quite a few of the boots filled yet all of a sudden they all vanished and they all disappeared off the face of the planet now we've got a you got to point out the what the uh, the elephant in the room here uh, the change of <laughs> management <laughs> the cheeky um, that didn't happen overnight that happened at the beginning of this year yeah yeah so i mean you, there's no way that that Tom, who organised the first one, can be blamed whatsoever. I will say this for the issues. I know that I like Tommy's and vlogs out have done it, but I'm going to do it on a live show. Tom Prendergast is in no way, shape, or form to blame for what happened over that weekend because he was dragged in at the very last minute to take over organising it because the organisers had completely fucked it up. Yeah, so that was it. It just felt very amateurish. Um, that um, and yeah, just very amateurish. Uh, and you know, if there was only having that many vendors, it should have been in a smaller room to try. But uh, uh, yeah, with it with people rattling around, it probably felt even more empty than it actually was. There's only one smaller space available at Olympia, and that's the conference room, and they can't use that because it's full of chairs that are actually bolted down. And it has carpet. Because that oh. is a bit, not a lot of people will, will know it, but it's actually dual level. There's actually two floors to that hall. But what they do, they can either do it as one hall or split it in half, and that's what happened. I mean, last year people were screaming to get places, isn't it? I know Riot Squad really wanted to get the uh, the Riot van in there, didn't they? And like Tom, Tom is a Tom is a diamond geezer. He, he takes time to chat, and uh, oh, she's modelling the shirt. Um, yeah, that's about the size of the mouth, I think. If you want to hit anybody, character, just just hit Les. You'll you'll feel the pain by proxy for me. As you can see, unfortunately, she's back to normal. Whatever that. Is. Uh, so, so the bang on the head didn't do a lot. Yeah, that was a bang. Sack of spuds uh, bring, comes to mind. Somebody we, actually asked me on Facebook, were there any positives from over the weekend? Yeah. You, it, yeah. you got to meet me, Les. Yeah. That is the thing. We got to talk to people. Positive. We got to talk to people. We might as well have all piled into a pub somewhere and said, okay, right, next year, pencil in this weekend, we'll all go to this pub and have a good drink and, and make, a, make a, a day of it. Because that's the, the, that was the highlight of the week. And if, any, if anybody wanted to turn up with, with juice and, do, and, and give juice to people by hand, individually, to people they're having a pint with, that would be awesome. That that would be more homely, and that was more the sort of atmosphere that I saw in the 
the chef's fest the first welsh one it was so homely and cozy it was too big for the venue it was too big for the venue as it was but it did give people space and it was a, a nice comfy place this was a shambles magoo yeah it was a two-day event two days too long yeah the, the other good thing that came out of it in a way, it was good at close to three o'clock because I was getting bored, witless, and went to the pub. But it's also not a good thing that it closed at three o'clock because most no. vendors that are paid for the whole weekend were all getting fucked out of three hours. Yeah, and, and if you look at it, like, business to business is 10 till 12. Now, the punters are 12 till 6. So go for 12 till 3, that's, they, that's half a show they're getting, essentially. Hmm. But the thing is, and it's something that I said last year, they ballsed up with the whole B2B idea. It should be a separate day like everyone else. Should have done B2B on the Friday and then had the event all day on the Saturday and sod the Sunday. Because the other problem they had this year was the fact that Sunday and Monday were not in Hill Carnival. Yes. It basically brings West London to a standstill anyway, normally. Go to that. So to hold another event, this is why London Vape Show was the only event on at Olympia last weekend. Normally, you get five or six events running, like last year you had the beer festival and everything else. But LBS was the only show on this this last weekend because everybody knew Notting Hill Carnival's on. You don't stand a chance in hell. Hey, maybe that's another way. Maybe that's what ought to be done. All the vapors line the sides of the the street, and the vendors go through them giving out juice. There we are. There's an idea for you. Vape carnival. Fuck. I mean, do it. What Lake Finder could have done, they could have got a float in the Notting Hill Carnival. Instead of using a lorry, they could have just put a shitload of berry liquid bottles underneath and just rolled the fucker all the way through. <laughs> it would have done the entire route. Yeah. But so, uh, so Chris, I have a question for you. Fire away. Uh, and and for for Les, uh, of of the because you you were in the the melee of the front uh, during the giveaway on Saturday. Have you tried any of the juices that were uh, launched at you or that were uh, being given out? Have you tried any of the products yet? Well, most of them were bare liquid. I gotta say, most of it was bare. And and also the the ones in the boxes the, uh, um, you know the silver and gold the silver and red ones, yeah. and red they they are good juice they 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 are naked fish is good juice yeah naked three um, bottles of the naked fish and I've done four bottles of the bear mm. oh just as a point we me and uh, Chris we uh, went to the pub afterwards and we went through the juices and if if I'd had juices and doubles that he didn't have i gave chris some juices so as the weeks go on now me and chris are going to do uh juice testing live juice reviews on the show as well so you get Ooh. my point of view of taste and you get chris's point of view of taste yeah so that'll be uh, that'll be good and it won't every week be uh bear juice it will be others no we'll, we'll well we could leave that as it, we could leave that for a bit yeah naked, naked fish piranha Rather nice. Was that the uh, the chocolate one? Vanilla custard and whipped cream. Van okay, vanilla custard. So maybe next week we could uh, we could do the naked fish. I think there's four or five of them. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. You I, I know the only one I tried was the the Nutella type one. You tried the bear, and you t and you kind of gagged. I, I poured it out, if you remember. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, that, that could have been because it was mixing with uh, a juice I already had in yeah, the tank. But I think your you know, actual words were, is this juice supposed to taste like this? <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, for me there was, uh, there was one of the juices, it was a, a green tea or something. No. A chai latte was the weirdest taste I think I've had in a juice. The one thing I didn't do is check the expiry dates. I wonder if the... Uh leftovers but uh no they didn't did uh was it eilick or something was the name of the company 
High Lick, yeah, they had some very odd uh, flavors. Uh, it's good that somebody's making something quite different than uh, the standard fruit, or, or but uh, that uh, was it. Ja Jasmine flowery one was very odd. Yeah, you picked up a you picked up a couple of different ones from Barracuda, didn't you? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, again, I, I I applaud them for coming up with a very different uh, taste flavor than than doing the same old, same old, same old. After you've had thirty lemon ones, you know uh, that was very good. I don't know whether I could do it the whole day, but so did you have which which of the bottles you bought from Barracuda? Um, I think I bought. Um, did you get a, a, a gin and cucumber? Yeah. I, I... Uh, that um, that is quite nice, and a, a strawberry mint, strawberry freeze. From them, I bought. Um... I bought this one, rhubarb and, rhubarb and custard gummy. So I thought I'd give that a go. Yeah. Um, but I've got, I've got lots of juice here. I'm going to give it all away because I'm not going to have it. So um, I'm going to send uh, Chris another care package with some extra bear liquid. <laughs> you can you can give the bear liquid to the people in the cancer cabin if you don't uh, like, yes. if, you, if you don't like them. The people. I know. I think I'll have a try. If uh, I was just looking, there's one grizzly, but I'm I don't quite know what the flavour is. Um, I just try yeah, opening yeah. it. Try, you know, we, this is an opportunity we can try them, and if you don't like it, you can bin it. It was just so funny on the Saturday when they were doing the giveaway, because where we were standing, there was a black gentleman standing next to me, and every time. He reached up and caught a bottle. It was bet, and it was grizzly, and he ended up with 160 ml of it. He couldn't <laughs> give it away. He was begging people to take it by the end. I mean, I was, I was, I was getting the bottles and and, and sharing them with the people next to me. Um, the one guy I'd met before on uh, at, at Expo, I think it was on London Vape Show, and the other guy on the other side. I thought, oh well, I'll just keep giving the juice, and then eventually I pulled a card out of my wallet and gave him a card as well. So, you know, got to get the word out, didn't I? But um, I did like the purge mods, but I'm not sure whether I'd drop that kind of cash on one. I must be one of the only people that actually had criticism for the new purge mod. Other than hmm. the price. Bear in mind it's 279 quid for a start. Which you expect for Purge because they're high end. Mm. You've got that lovely mag mod with a pishy plastic switch on the side. It's bad, isn't it? And it actually looked, made the mod look cheap. Um, you've just got this lovely turned metal tube, looks really fantastic with this bit of plastic stuck on the side. And it just looked wrong. Um, can you remember the name of the Italian company? Cloud, the Cloud Chasers, Cloud. Italian uh, company. Yeah, they were on the left when you first came in, they, uh, quite near the stage. Okay, so uh, they uh, were doing mech mods. They as, a, were as a bit of a three hundred quid. That's a bit of a tour. Oh yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, they did. Um, basically, it's um, a mech mod, and you've got different um, size tubes that you can. Can customize your, your, your mech a bit like the old AV um, layered uh, ones. But walking on the, sh the show, you add the first thing you get is on first thing you get on the left, you get make sure you're at CBD Expo in, in, in March. The first thing you get, you see pretty much it's CBD Expo in March. You're a psycho bunny, then you add can uh, can of cotton, coil gods. Then you had the stage, and I'll come back to that as well. Then you had Horizon Tech doing the Falcon Tanks. Mm -hmm. Then you had some juice company, which I don't know. Then it was another one that just did two flavours. Yeah. Which was like the, the tangerine one there was nice, actually. Then just to the right of that, you had the big stand with the um, Ciderberg. Yes. You had... Uh, that was very that was, the, that was their booth. Premier e had all that there. And, and, the, and then Premier e then was opposite there. And then behind there, you had BKS. 
and they had four, four stands. They were made it look like he was four different companies because everything was waterfall on the one stand, but it's all the same thing, it's all one distribution. And then on the left of that, obviously, you had the um, <coughs> then the company name, you know, yeah, um, yeah, the, and, um, the um, tobacco company that are still selling cigarettes dipped in VG. No, I actually picked one off the floor, right? One of these, uh, one of these refills. Mm. Have you seen how little tobacco is in this thing anyway? Because mm. that's the filter, yeah, and, and that is all the tobacco that's there. Six minutes, yeah. <sighs> Ridiculous. So what we should we shouldn't actually um have a go we should turn around and refer to them as the people that paid for the entire event. Mm. Yeah, there was yeah. a few tobacco companies there though. Because that booth they paid ten thousand. So you had them there, then the next one on the corner, um you had Kinky Vapor. Obviously that was the, the, the um Jamaican guy doing the arty stands the, that was stands. that was one of the most refreshing stands uh, there to be honest little little, little acrylic laser cut uh, arty stands and then you had in front of you you had the, the speakers area which was all boxed off which was rather understated to the right you had barracuda and from there you had the guys that were doing the filming from last year, they've got their own juices in the red, um, in the red bags. That, that, they were there. Then berry liquid then, and then around the corner you had, um, or you, in front of you, you had the, I don't know, I don't know what company it was, but they, they did like hibiscus flavors and, and a lot of ice stuff. And then you had, um, uh, strawberry queen around the corner from there and obviously you had blue and um what's the other one light next door to each other yeah and that was it that was it it was i think it was 18 18 vendors shocking hi barry i am still alive i spent more on a weekend on food and drink than i did actually the most contemplating spent, buying stuff the most i spent the whole of saturday if you take the travel out of it six pound i spent in tesco metro buying sandwiches and drinks for the way home yeah which would have cost about 30 quid in, in the venue hmm. especially when you're paying two pound 25 for a 500 mil bottle mm. of water just so your wife can take two ibuprofen mm. And there was no bar. There was no beer there this year. Well, there was, but it was cans. It was cans. And it was five pound a can. Yeah, five pound. Thirty mil. That's taking the piss. Anyway, what further rent rant do you want to add to that? Then, uh, oh, we missed out MSV Superior. Superior well, had the had the, pur had the purges, yeah. So. Any more to add, Les? On which subject? Because there are several that have come out of the weekend. Well, I was, I was going to mention another one, but I, I cut myself off and I've forgotten now. That's old age, you know. Um, Basically, the biggest problem public with the event was there weren't enough to actually sell to the public. There was about three that I counted that were actually selling. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. I, 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 ridiculous. From the, I mean, I know that B2B is the important thing. Mama. 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 See, the way it was in their shops. If you're going to bring the public into the event, please let them buy the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They were there. So, I mean, you that? I mean, the one the one stand that was doing fairly decent prices on stuff was the, the BKS distro. I've got them on now. And they had, the, they had bags of 20 random... 10 mil mm. bottles for a tenner yeah. if he was going there to pick up a bargain i mean i picked up two or three of them bags just to get a bit of a, a couple of flit you know a bit of a range and um yeah if you wanted a bargain there were bargains to be had there but it was just so bare i mean i was talking to um 
a couple of the vendors and they were just it was, they were just dismayed i mean i know that a couple of vendors last year were a bit pissed off but this year i think they were all pissed off balls to be honest i hope every single one of them because i think every single one of them was bent over and fucked to be honest <laughs> because if if you were to count how many people were there on Saturday, I think you'd struggle to hit 120. And that's including the vendors. And Sunday was even worse yep. than what I saw. Sunday was very quiet. Conway, I have got you a present. Where well, I can find I it. Long time, I think. I can, I can post it or I can burn it. Totally up to you. Suggestions on what to do with it, guys. Send it to Devil Vapor. He can transform it into the hashtag Afterthought Edition. Shall I print? Shall I, set, shall I print up a page with him and his bio on it and stick it in there? Because that's a completely another thing that happened. The show guide was completely screwed by the fact that they didn't even put Devil Vapor in there. He is very cheesed off. He's no longer associated himself with them. I mean, I, I did, I did message Tom and say, any chance I can become one of your reviewers, but not, not, any, not after seeing this weekend. I can forget that. Can you consider that Devil Dino was one of the first, if not the first, if I find a reviewer. And is it, is it right that Sir Vapalot was in here? But Dean's been with them a long time, and the way they treat show guy yes yeah, well, so, as we say Tom had nothing to do with it but you think as a company there we are nice big mm. picture of smock smock were in there yep none of the none of the manufacturers were there i mean even bloody what's on folk were there under a distro white label white label distro with the um ape line they were in there doozy vapors they were in there so you've got a book full of things. I mean, that crowd. Okay, Chris, that was what it was like last year. It was chock a block and it was busy. Right, look at that belly of punch thrown in that picture. Oops. The only punch was at the bar. Two count the glass. Yeah. Uh, yes, you were talking about the tobacco company, uh, uh, which which I did visit the stand, which, uh, I, as we were discussing on the Saturday, I thought it was very strange that a tobacco company is at a vape show. You, you, they, was, you was curious about it, weren't you, anyway? Yeah. Uh, I don't really think a tobacco company should be at a vape show. If there hadn't been, then Blue and White wouldn't have been there, right? Especially, well, especially selling tobacco. Well, selling a tobacco product, yes. Now, sorry, a tobacco company selling a vape product is a slightly different story, but selling a tobacco product. Uh, so, I, yes, I went I went up to the... Uh, how do you pronounce it? Icos? Shit. Icos? Shit. IQOS, I quit ordinary smoke. I quit ordinary smoking. Bum, bum, bum. Let's oh, Philip Morris International. Uh, yes, well, I, I went on to the stand and uh, I asked if I could uh, if I could try it. And uh, they wouldn't let me because I'm not a smoker. Mm -hmm. Which uh, I thought was kind of weird. So you could go there, you could look at it, but you can't have any. Absolutely. Which, in a way, you can see they're being responsible because they're not allowing non-smokers to try tobacco products. Yeah. But, on the other hand, if you're not going to let the people that are actually at a vaping expo try it, what's the point in being there, apart from trying to press gang shots to stop the product? Yeah, they were, they were just totally targeting, targeting businesses. They That's did, all they did. although I didn't see it, have their new vaping system on show as well. Uh, I, I didn't see that. I had a look through the gadget, which was a bit odd. And uh, and when when the guy who was uh, demonstrating it, he was 
they were saying there's no smoke. I saw smoke, and I could sm smell smoke coming off it. It's vapor. It's not smoke. Yeah. Yeah. It's smoke. It has to be burning. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's very debatable, isn't it? Mm. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Exactly. And the fact you can take a heat out, take a lighter to it, and smoke it normally, you know. There's that. They, were, they were saying it's wrapped in uh, aluminium or aluminium, uh, so you can't. But the aluminium off. Duh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't see any aluminium on this thing. Let's have a look. Guess what? Guess what it smells like? Burnt tobacco. Burnt tobacco. It is, and it, it's being processed, so it looks rather fibrous. So they've done some, they have done some kind of processing to it. But apparently, this new system they've got the mesh is a vaping system. Well, you, they've, they've got, they've got to do that. They've got to bring out a vaping system because. Everybody else is doing it, and they, and they can see their profits falling. Because even that has got undertones behind it because it's not actually going to be released by IQOS, at least by a company called Forward Vaping Limited, which up until two years ago was a standalone vaping company that was started by a gentleman who was intent on producing his own mods, his own tanks, and his own equipment sold that company out to Philip Morris for 11.2 million pounds and is now number two in Philip Morris's vaping division. Arsenal in other words. That's... They're not even going to market it under their own name, they're going to market it under some other shell company. Mm. Well that's the way they do it isn't it? Uh, they, said they are on social media and everything else desperate to get away from tobacco and get away from cigarettes. Why didn't they re release a vaping system first? So, so the the vape pen, uh, uh, e pen three. Who was that? Is that Philip Morris? I can't remember which company that British oh, American Tobacco, tobacco isn't it? I think it's Laurelard, isn't it? Yeah. Because you've got blue as well. Blue. Uh, uh... I don't. Know. At least they've gone down the hole. This is a coil. This is a vaping device, right? Yeah. Where they've gone from. This isn't tobacco leaves. And this is nothing to do with tobacco. This is not a tobacco product. Whereas Philip Morris have basically done that to the entire vaping industry and vaping community and gone, we're going to still sell cigarettes, which is going to cope in VG and cool eats. Vape is bad. Okay. Thank you, dear. You didn't have to type it in chat. You could have said it to me, you know, since you're sitting next to me. <laughs> Kerrigan, come over and snuggle. She doesn't want to be seen on camera. She hasn't got her ready creep. I mean, makeup on. Fuck off! I think that was a no. After I took you out for a time on Saturday, how ungrateful can you be? No. I gotta, say, I gotta say, as a pen though, as a pod pen, the Vibe E Pen 3 is not bad. The first time I tried a Vipe product, it was in the most unlikely of places. Uh, should I guess where you put it? We should keep that private, maybe. The first time I tried a Vipe product was at Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. I was walking down past the stadium and there were people actually walking down with huge great Vipe signs, letting people try the product and giving out samples. And that was the first place I tried them and I must have they've actually thought about it and thought about what they were doing. Hmm. They produced a very good product and the E-Pen 3 actually looks quite good. Uh, I think you get a pretty decent uh, vape off it actually, mm. for a pen. Do, do you, as a new vapor, do you feel that it's an effective pen? Uh, in fact, I was talking to people on Sunday about it because uh, I picked up one of those starter pens as well. They're aiming at a very different market to, I think, you two. I think it's a very female orientated, and uh, and I think people who didn't used to be smokers. 
Box standard blue pod kit. I didn't pick up a, a blue. But I think no, I had some pods for blue, but I've got my blue kit up the shed. So Chuck and I have been around a few years. Okay. In vaping. So we remember the bad old days. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've, I feel it's very uh, professional looking, actually. But if I'd have had a choice back when I switched between this and the Ego and CE4 kits, I'd have chosen yeah. this. Yeah, it's convenient. It's, it's a, it's a no-brainer. You just and they're actually better than the CE4 and Egos. Yeah. <laughs> but they've done a bloody job developing them with how they've done it because the flavour is good, the vapour production, and it gives you that hit that you need when you've just come off the cigarettes. Yeah. 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 We have an announcement in chat. Uh, Vape UK Network doesn't split. That's good to know. Huh. Anyway, I think we should stop this chat because people need to get these thumbs up in the in the in the. Uh, in the show, so get the thumbs up down this way. It's, it's, it's one of these. It's, it's there somewhere. It's it's down there. That no, it's that side. It's down there. Oh, fuck. oh. Down there. okay then. All right. Okay. I'm outnumbered. I'll point in the wrong direction. I'm gonna say thirty-two thousand watching now. Chris is a decent number. Yeah, yeah, th th yeah th 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 Maybe it's, it's the rumours of Les. It is. is People that... are shocked he's alive. It says thirty-two, but it's a little. People watching this show now than they were at Olympia on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they will come along. They are. If only he had mentioned my name as one of the guests, there was only Les. Just after he said he only came to the show to speak to you and Andy. Excuse me. Your name on the I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, if 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 Expo, if um, Expo, if. London Vip Show was going to be so so bare. We could have taken some VUKN posters and had a little stall, because there was plenty of space to do it. Because um, there was certainly a lack of companies. Whose volume is that? It's well, just attempt a mic drop. Seriously. Done it with an expensive mic, not your two pound ninety nine bloody pound stretcher job. No, that's over there. Actually, actually, no. This is my uh, this is my uh, Samsung Q seven. Nice little mic. Because uh, we can hear your voice through. Now this is the Behringer. This is. So um, yeah, so. Total apologies to Chris for this week for the weekend. Although I mean, like we hadn't seen each other for twenty five years, so it was a good catch up. And um, let we, it be twenty five years again. You, yeah. No, no, you need to come. You need to come to Expo because that is a completely different kettle of fish. Not the October Expo, the May Expo. Well, the October one will be just as good, but you know, because I'm not there. All oh, right, okay then. Oh, that sounds good then. <laughs> And as much as it pains me to say it, if you're looking for a vape, go to Vape Jam. At least you know what you're going to get. No, you go to SN Vaping. There's a, that's not a vape show. That's that's a piss poor place. You can't no, get you, you probably, you, or anything else. You probably get more people through the door in one day than, than uh, Olympia. There's only one big problem with, with SN Vaping. You have to put up with Stevie Nichols. <laughs> That bloke's irritating. Tetley, fuck off. Mm. Not there we are, Expo. Two months time. Yeah, so it's it's on. Um, it's pretty. It's a pretty good time because it's the weekend just when the kids break up. As I said, it's up to the half term. Yeah, just the mm -hmm. first weekend. Mm. Yeah. Expo in October or May. Mm. It's the same problem you have with Vape Jam. Trying to get a hotel around there is nigh on impossible. Oh, it's expensive. Don't worry, Chris, you can share with me. It wouldn't have been the first time we've been in the room sleeping together. <laughs> that was 25 years ago. When I was going to say it was 25 years ago and we both had a cigarette afterwards. <laughs> 
Yeah. And I and I was wearing my smoking jacket, my smoking, my smoking. Uh, what do you call it? Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Last twenty five years, you have kind of let yourself go. Just saying. <clears throat> never, uh. never. I feel like Barney from The Simpsons. It's funny because you look like him. <laughs> I don't know, it looks more like Bam Bam. Anyway. Oh. Yes. So Expo is a different kettle of fish. It is massive. There's there's no it's, it's not a case of you're gonna have a, you know so many of the vendors not turn up on the day. It is massive. You got dozens of companies that come over from China just to show off the uh, machines that bottle liquid. Mm. It, it, it is massive. You get tons of juice companies. You get you get all the big manufacturers. You get some really random stuff, and it is just the place to be. Massive stand. I mean, a massive stand. Yeah, you got like fifteen mods, all all using the same alien or pro color chip. Just looking different. Yeah. Can we say it? There is actually a vape. A vape show coming up this weekend. Then that's going to be an interesting one. I, I, I mm. be interesting. Vape show is because the emphasis is more on what's not vaping than what is vaping. I wonder what will turn up. Because all the advertising in BMX, car drifting, and stuff like that, which is all going to be part of it. Oh. The emphasis should be on the vaping side. But let's put it this way, they can't do worse than last weekend. I don't think anything can. Even the first expo in the pavilion at the NEC was than last weekend. And that was a very, very end of the I'm going to find a picture on my Facebook now and I'll show you it and you'll laugh. Um, chat a minute while I uh, dig it out. That strawberry queen over there. Yeah, they, they're everywhere. They they always go, uh, and a lot of the companies always go. Um, I'm going to be a good boy about strawberry queen. I'm not going to go off into them. the Yorkshire Vapor. What a name! They are, they're a good company. They do good um, cotton as well. Um, mm. So I'm going to put up a picture now, if I can do it now. So. Good evening, Mr. Stone. Welcome. Div LOI, otherwise known as Darren Stone, bloody good reviewer, advocate for vaping, and the first person to put a blog out about it last week. And he was honest with every word he said. So if you haven't subscribed to him, click on him, go and subscribe. You, it's well worth it. Yeah, even I subscribe to him. And I'm a tight ass for my subs. Okay, so here we have. Um, oh look, vape fest. That is the that is one of the very first vape fests. Um, so this was in the courthouse. You've got a gazebo which is about ten meters by thirty. Okay, the the gazebo part on the left is just the walkway from the building to the to the main gazebo, and the main gazebo was about thirty meters by ten meters, and. The last show that they did here, they had over 2,000 people go through the doors. I can remember camping out with um, Rob, who went on to be um, director of Halo in the UK. And at first he was just, he came over from um, Cyprus just to go to the show. And you turn up at the show and they were given giveaways as you go in. There was no throwing out stuff. There was the first hundred people through the door will get a goodie bag, or the first ten people, the first ten, the first person through the door would get a starter kit and some juice and some other stuff, and the next twenty would get some juice, big packets, and and the next ninety would get some more juice. That is the way to do it. Or or put a golden ticket in the in the bags. Give people bags, golden ticket, and 
if they get called up on stage bring your golden tickets up and then you could you know you'd, you'd, you'd have the people going up on stage and that's an ideal opportunity for them to take photos of the people who won which is more good advertising uh, yeah, yes, I didn't think that uh, giveaway, for want of a better term, at the end was uh, was very good. See, Huxter, the thing is, you went to London Light Show, as we know with us. You saw that giveaway. That is nothing compared to what happens at Expo. No, they do the same thing, but more. With about ten times more people. Mm. And it is literally like a bun fight. You will end up with full scale punch ups over the last expo I went to, the May before last, on the Sunday they did their usual thing, which is at the end of the show they have a massive throw out and it's literally all the vendors just getting rid of all their stock. Mm -hmm. I saw a woman have her thumb broken, literally snapped by someone wrenching a lanyard off of it because she caught it on her thumb and somebody yanked it back so hard her thumb went backwards. Ooh. Yeah. Do you, they fight over everything. The, the, yeah. the, the expo before last, I can remember the King of Vapes basically give everything on their stand away. And they were they weren't throwing it out. It was literally people they were throwing boxes to the people in the front and the people in the front would move away and some more would come forward. And they do the same thing. And they might throw a couple of boxes out, but it was all fairly civil. But if you go to the main stage, completely different. But the thing being is, if you get rid of the free shit culture at the it's going to turn up. Because I bet the biggest whingers out of the whole weekend from London Vape Show were those that turned up after three o'clock or so. Because they turned he was going to be having a massive throw out and there'd be loads of free shit and they would deny it. And there were, there were people that were turning up and gone at three o'clock. Now, I went down, they, they closed at three. I went downstairs and I couldn't find one of my mods. It slipped inside my jacket lining. So I was there looking and there were people, one after another, come in and saying, uh, I just come into the VIP show. No, uh, we've closed the show. You need to contact this number to get a refund. And then Two minutes later, somebody else had come in. Oh, sorry, I do apologise. This does, and it was a constant. It was a constant stream of people coming in, wanting to go to the show which they paid for, that was closed early. Well, some of them were paid for because there were more free tickets than there were paid. Like, because if I'd have paid my ten pound for a ticket, I would have been well and truly. And it's not just the ticket there's, it's the people who might have travelled for two or three hours to get there. Now, I was talking to Imran, um, who owns, uh, um, oh, the vape shop in Cardiff, and um, he was saying, should I come up? And, and he was thinking about driving up. That's, that's, a, that's a long drive to turn up and not be able to get in. I mean, take you, Chunk, for example. I mean, you travelled up from Wales. You mm. paid for a hotel, and then you travelled back. Mm. And you've spent quite a bit of money, if we're honest. Yeah. It, 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 food. it was a good job I didn't drive, really, because that extra weight that he gave me to, to ship the parcel to Jay would really have tipped the balance on my, on my petrol. But you've got people, I mean, I know people who were planning to come down from Scotland, for example. So you think Scotland down to London, you're looking at average five hours and a lot of money in petrol. Then you've got hotel bills, because hotels around Olympia are not cheap. I paid £147 for three days. Uh, and it was only a two-day event. I went up on the Thursday midday, went into London, had a wander. On the Friday, I went and visited a couple of vape shops, and I'll, I'll come back to that after. And then on the Saturday and Sunday, I did the shows. So you're looking at, the bus was 20 quid. The, the hotels were 147. 
the travelling around London is more money. So you're looking at 200 quid straight off for some. Uh, but it was. What well, have we got to show for it? £3.99's worth of e liquid. Mm. But that's the thing. Me and you, it's not a case of going there for the, the stands. It's going there to meet the people that you've spoke to and, you know, that know you. And just to. It's, a, it's more of a social thing. It's this not is, about the free shit. This is the first time since I started vaping. I started vaping, I used to be in the crowd. I used to be grabbing whatever I could. Mm. It's the first time in ages that I've actually gone to the stage for a giveaway. And it was mainly just to see what was going to happen. I gave up an expo. It's, it's, it's just pointless. Um, and to be honest, I actually regret going to stand for that giveaway. Well, I, the events that unfolded because I left that event wanting to kill people. And it literally, it's literally taken for me up until, I would say, late last night, early this morning, to actually calm down enough to think about things rationally because I was that incensed by it. Because this is something we haven't covered yet, is it? No. You, you, mean, you, you mean my waterfall profile? The what happened during the giveaway on Saturday. I'll tell you what, I'll be nice. I'll let you go first with yours and then I'll go first. I'll go after you with mine. Well, I, on Saturday, for a very brief time, split seconds, I, I did actually have the Waterfall's new, uh, new dripper before it was knocked out of my hand and I was punched in the face. Not what you expect. I know they do say if you're in the, the, the area, you expect to get pushed around or whatever, but that was just taking the piss. Let's be honest, you were standing next to me. <clears throat> Most people that know me and have met me in person, I'm not a small person. And then uh, when uh, Kerrigo went down, um, it was it was it was easier to see what it unfolded because there weren't that many people there, but I was shouting and screaming at the top of my voice to Ashley on the stage to get her attention, and there was nothing. I was shouting and shouting. I must have shouted nine or ten times before finally, because every time I was shouting, I was walking forward to you know to try and get attention. Wave my arms. Obviously, that means nothing, and. Basically, what happened after you took a punch in the face from that asshole who was very close on finding out who it is and where he is? I won't go too much into that, but there may very well be some sort of proceeding going to be taken against him for assault. This happened. Chris, unfortunately, had his tooth loosened. We were standing there bleeding. But we tried to get him to stop the giveaway. Minutes and quite a lot of shouting to get to stop. Yeah, that was the thing. They just wanted to continue, even when uh, your good lady was on the floor. This is what happened. I'm standing there with Chris, with Chunk to my right, Chris holster slightly behind me, and Carica right behind me, and she was pushed in right. Behind my arm. Now they started throwing the bottles out again. And the little bottle came over. Thing I know, I felt Kerrika disappear from my back. I looked down, she's on the floor. A gentleman who, I will say it categorically, accidentally, because it was a complete accident. He, he did actually apologise, didn't he, on the way out? He jumped up, grabbed the bottle, and as he came down, the point of his elbow smacked Kerrika in the side of the head and knocked her out. So there she is, laying on the floor. I quickly checked if she's all right and got up and started screaming at the compares on the stage. Now, again, Johnny from BH Vapors, my compare, I will categorically say it was not his fault. He had nothing to do with it. Once he found out what was going on, he did stop. But a certain person by the name of Ashley, who happens to be the owner of Strawberry Queen e-liquids, decided to completely ignore seven or eight people screaming for her to stop 
and decided to carry on doing the giveaway. And this is where also the whole organisation of the event comes into question. Because my wife sustained a pretty serious head injury. Mm. And knocked her out for a few, or a, albeit a few seconds, but left her with a huge lump on the side of her head and a serious headache. There was no first aid provision provided by the venue. There we wasn't. were only from us was a student paramedic from St John's Ambulance who took over treatment. Makes you wonder, really, to do uh, events like this. Uh, and they're supposed to have first aiders to call. The venue is supposed to have first aiders, aka the security, which of course was non-existent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it wasn't just me and character, was it? It was the uh, it was the the lady in the wheelchair at the front of the right, right at the front. She was being jostled around. Um, it was like a mosh pit. There was literally ten people around that poor lady in that wheelchair, and they were towering over her, budging her wheelchair out, jamming in front of her. Now, I will admit we did all right out of stuff we got. Everything else, so I actually felt that bad. That I walked up to the lady in the wheelchair after it had all happened, and I gave her 80, 80 mil of e-liquid and apologised profusely for the assholes that had basically ruined her day. Because it affected me that badly. But, to me, and this is where I am going to get a bit ranty and I apologise, these free shit giveaways need to fucking stop, because otherwise somebody is going to get really seriously that's what I think. Now, the thing is, if you take the human body, it has a couple of weak points. The biggest ones are there, namely your temples. If that gentleman that jumped up that bottle of e-liquid and connected with her had been three inches further forward, she would still be in hospital with a fractured skull. If she even regained consciousness. And you've got these so-called industry leaders who own e-liquid companies up on stage screaming and shouting to hype people up that don't give a shit about people's health, people's well-being. All they care about is their precious little giveaway and their precious little company. And that woman, namely Ashley from Strawberry Queen e-liquids, who I will be sending a link to this show to, is a fucking disgrace that does not deserve to be part of this community and I hope that most times because I am sick to death of these assholes growing in the community I love. I mean, we've already talked about different ways of doing it like uh, raffle tickets or just doing the goodie bags as they come in. And, and if you think about it, that frees up time for them to do more fun things on the stage like maybe some kind of games where you could win some juice or, or a mod or whatever something competitive but not physical you know whether it's um you know amateurs blowing the hoops or you know balancing a fucking football on your head it could be anything just to get a bit of noise and a bit of in, uh, interaction with the people that are there it doesn't have to be throwing stuff out it can be fun let's do the proper thing, and I would urge anybody who may see this who organises an expo and event or something else, get rid of the free shit culture. Absolutely. And the way you do it is quite simple. You account the vendors at that event to sell to the general public. And every person that spends £10 at a booth gets a raffle ticket. And basically, the more you spend, the more tickets you get. And at the end of the event, you hold a fuck off massive raffle. And therefore, those people that have contributed financially to that event by actually supporting the event will actually get something back. May get something back. I mean, that, could, that could be done across the, the, all the vendors in the expo, or it could be the, the individual vendors. If a vendor, say for example, um, Six Licks, if Six Licks give a raffle ticket for every bottle that they sell. Hmm. When they go up on stage, they draw out of their pot for the people who've actually bothered to pay for something for the, one of their products. 
It doesn't have to be across all vendors. I mean, it's, it's, I can see it's a little bit more difficult with the, the hardware side of things, but that's where goodie bags and, and random golden tickets can come in, you know? You... I, mean, I used to go to a lot of computer fairs and computer shows. There's no way to show and they would lob a PC out or they wouldn't lob a printer out or a modem or anything like that because it's stupid because if you threw a PC case into a crowd that'd be absolute pandemonium people would literally get taking baseball bats and beating the crap out of each other to get up with it and that's happened with you Chris the Watofo profile not available in the UK for two weeks of the show Yet that guy decided to play Superman, go right across my back, and punch you in the face to get a hold of him. I was more annoyed because I'm not on... I, I don't go to, to vendors to get hardware and stuff, so I'm not on a lot of the uh, um, reviewer lists. So this was an opportunity for me to get it and review it mm. early. And, you know, now I've got to wait two, three weeks for it to come out to, 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 mm. to buy it and review it. So had your hand on it that was the main thing because it, i reached up it hit my hand came down to you and i was like yes he's got it and then i felt my backpack go from that shoulder to that shoulder as i was spun round because he went through me straight into you and then he had the cheek to stand there and argue that he'd done nothing wrong but you compare that to the guy who elbowed Kerika. Now when we met him outside afterwards he was... Unintentionally. He, yeah, yeah, he was totally unintentional. He was probably waiting actually. No, he was totally unintentional. He was bending over backwards to offer help. Do you want a lift, do you want a lift to the train station? Do you want some food? Do you want to go, do you want a drink? He, he, he actually left the anything. event he didn't know what to do. He was that torn up by it. He actually walked out. And I stood there chatting to him as you know after we left. And to find out his story, the fact that he's an IQOS user. He's yeah, I was going to say, he, he worked for IQOS, he said. It was just nice to talk to him. Quite normal. There was no animosity, no nothing. I mean, as you said, the guy offered to buy us a drink, he offered to buy us a meal, he offered to run us home. He was that gutted by what had happened. But it was a pure accident, whereas yours was a sort. There's no way around it because. He actually was fully intent on doing that, as you know from the previous giveaways, where he was bouncing around in the crowd, knocking people out of the way and everything else. He was like a he was like a shark circling back and forth to see where in the crowd would be the best place to stand to get it. The funny thing is, he didn't realise two things. Number one, the Watofo profile isn't available for two weeks, so if it even shows up on Facebook, we've got him. We know who he is. Also weekend he was walking around with a rather distinctive baseball cap on so you can pretty much easily find him there so we can... and i will be making sure once we've got imagery of him and information of him i pass it on to every single expo organizer in the country so if he happens to turn up they refuse him entry Anyway. Anyway, yes. Chris. Yes, hello. You were views. Because you, you, I mean, what, what, the other thing I noticed as well is when they were throwing stuff out, there was more bottles of juice going out than there were hands up in the air. So a lot of it was landing on the floor and people were just bending down to pick it up. It was like a game of Hungry Hippos. It was. And, and it was easy enough for people to just bend down, pick a bottle up. They might as well. They might as well have just taken that bin and just thrown it across the floor, and people just bend down and pick up what they want. Two of those I got because the gentleman in front of me bent down to pick up a bottle of air liquid, and two of those boxes bounced off the back of his neck into my hand because they were literally scrambling around the floor for the berry liquids. I mean, I, I was right at the front, and I looked down, and every and I could see that I had my I had all my bags and stuff, and I had my jacket over the top. And there were bottles landing on my jacket. Huh? That's what it was. It was like it was. It was like rain. Oh, can you think how many bottles? 
they were in that dustbin. I mean, that was full size. Must have been at least 50, 60 litre dustbin. It, it wasn't just the one. No, but the first one was bad yeah. enough. They literally had it put to the brim. Because they had that much to get rid of. I know. But, uh, hello, Chris. <laughs> I think, uh, though, um, exactly what uh, Les was saying there, that eventually this kind of thing, the, the free-for-all at the front, giving away things, somebody's going to get hurt at one of, uh, eventually. Oh, if, you are, if you are at the front, if you're at the front in Expo, you will. You just hold your hat out and people will just drop them into there. But it's the ones in the second, third, fourth layer. No. I, they, they're the ones that push forward onto the first layer. They're the ones that start jumping up and down and fighting for the balls. I don't no. know if you saw it on Sunday. The goals they had up on stage. Mm -hmm. this, again, it's where I totally agree with Devil Baker with what he said as well. But they were throwing them over arm with such a velocity. Yeah. They actually hit one of the booths at the back. I'm sure that one of the girls was trying to knock stuff off the shelves of that booth. Wow. Somebody in the eye and all hell will break loose. And, and, and that's what I felt. I, um, that you, like so many things, you wonder why, you know, accidents have never happened before. You know, I've, I've been to rugby games, football games, and, you know, what you used to see was absolute craziness. And it, unfortunately, it takes an injury before something gets changed. And yet, yes, there was two on Saturday, but it could have been much worse. Mm. Certainly, certainly some of the hardware that was being thrown out and how people were acting, I don't think they should continue doing that. Yeah. But that, that's just me. And this is where like a fresh pair of eyes is, is, is useful as well. Because this is your first show. You, you wouldn't be um, enticed to go to another show there. Uh, well, not that kind of thing. That was... Uh, no. But... Uh, again, I, I pretty much kept out of that anyway. I've, I've seen... Uh, those giveaways like that before, and they are, uh, well, I, I didn't need anything that badly. Even the t-shirts. Now, do you think how, a t how you wear a t-shirt like this? If you're throwing them out like this, they're not deadly weapons. Yeah. When you're throwing them out, still wrapped up in the plastic, wrapped around the cardboard to the sharp edges of Can I somebody wonder? Yeah. No, no I, I, I think we're exactly what you're saying. It, uh, they need to look at it different ways. You know, the, the, the first hundred people that come in or something like that, that's the way it should be in future. The first white jet in that very same hall, they put out the week before, we'll get a goodie bag. People are queuing up. So you had, all right, you had a bit of a fight and a jostle for people trying to be the first hundred. I will admit it because I was involved in it. And it was basically legging it from the train station up to make sure you were one of the first hundred. But in that bag, you got about 60 ml of liquid, you got a coiling tool, you got a load of key rings, stickers, and stuff like that. So it's actually worthwhile. When you turn up at London, and you get one of those with a temple of liquid and a bit of cardboard, not even a show guide. Mm -hmm. People are thinking, hey, well, I've paid £10 for my ticket and I've only got this. So it makes them more determined to grab free shit in the giveaways. And do you know what? No other bag that you get, I looked, uh, I didn't realise that that was for a free 10ml bottle of CBD exhibitor. Right? Yeah. So I went to the stand anyway and asked Psycho Bunny, um, the price of the 10 mil bottles of Sibida. And the guy actually said, well, we don't have pricing at the moment. <laughs> bear, yeah, bear, bear, just... bear in mind that I was wearing my business to business band. Uh, we don't have pricing for, for 
the product. So it goes to show how pre prepared they are when they come to these shows. And Psycho Buddy, they know, they know a small company. They've been around a long time. And, you know, they should have done their homework. Yes. But um, if anybody from Vapefinder does happen to watch this, if for some bizarre reason you decide to <coughs> next year, which I sincerely hope you don't, here's a little idea. Instead of throwing stuff off on the stage, have your little booth and say, for every bottle of berry liquid you buy, we'll give you 5,000 free. <laughs> and do it that way. Because at least you'll get some money. Well, you'd, you'd have to buy a bottle of beer liquid, wouldn't you? <laughs> so there's always a flaw in an argument, isn't there? But this is why I'm actually glad you asked on this show, because A, it was nice to meet you on Saturday for the first time. And you holster as well. It was in Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. finally. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. It was a great pleasure to meet you as well. Yeah. Because I appreciate you coming on the chunk and doing what you do. Week in, week out. Week in, week out. It's only for the money. Oh, but it is nice to see someone who's just starting their journey and basically travelling on that journey. Yeah, no, Chris is... Uh, Mr Chunk, sorry, did I call him Chris there? Mr Chunk has been a, a, a good source of advice. A good av av avocado. <laughs> a good advocate. <laughs> It's actually been nice sitting here listening to your viewpoint on the show because you're a new vapor. It was your first time at an event. Regardless of what Chunk and I say, because we've been to so many events and everything else, our opinion doesn't really matter that much. You, as a new, new vapor, new consumer, your opinion means more than all of the rest of us put together. Especially when you think that one of the aspects was bring a new vapor to the show to get a starter kit and then you just imagine somebody would come off the street maybe is still smoking and gone to that show and had a starter kit given to them and then oh, and, after the fight that they needed a cigarette <laughs> and a lot of alcohol yeah one one moment on that <coughs> you heard the debacle with the, with the starter kit didn't you no Chris had a starter kit now he he uh, found a, a pack of cigarettes and I said, "Well, if you found them, take them. Uh, you have a spare kit or whatever." Apparently, I don't know if this is right. The more advanced style kits were all left in the hotel room. Mm. I, I heard. I watched one of the other videos. So this was the Aramax pen, I think it was. So it's an ego and a C four. Is that C, what it is? Yeah. I think it's got replacement coils in it. The only problem is... Yes, it does. C4+. Plus. Where to get the coils from? Uh, yeah, they were, they were tiny as well. As you can imagine, on a pen that size. Size is not everything, Chris. You know that. Right. Uh, as you <laughs> might remember, it's what you do with it that counts. Exactly. Empire Vape Co. was presented with someone set it up for them. Cigarettes he smoked. He said 10 to 15 a day. Guess what milligram strength e liquid they gave him? Was it the 18s? Yeah. 18 milligram for a 10 to yeah. 15 day smoker. She should be on like a 12, 11 or 12. How many 12s? Yeah. 18. Yeah, they give me uh, 18s and uh, uh, sixes. Act actually, there was a, a bag full of different uh, juices, Wolverine or something, Wolves liquid. I uh, don't know the brand. The, the Wolverine liquid would have been. Um, oh my gosh, it's the Decang. Is it Decang? They came oh, up with it. They came up with a luxury brand. Yeah, that's the one. Vent. Yeah, that's the one. Which reminds me, have we got anybody in here who uses six milligram liquid and likes menthol tobacco? If there's anybody in 
Sorry, I didn't know what cigarettes I was smoking, you see. Right. But uh, that's the, the juice they give me with the oh, no, stuff. Mm. I, I don't know what it is. And you'd think, I'm sorry, that's 18 milligram, yeah? So you'd think the people that were giving out the kits would have been educated enough in, in their forum to have given the right product. I didn't even have a cheat sheet. Well, it's, uh, I don't know what wolf juice is, but, uh, but, then again, but I, tr I, I tried it and I started howling. I'm, I'm guessing in a C4 it probably wouldn't be too harsh, but it's still not the right level. Yeah, but let's be honest, if you're a smoker and you smoke five a day, I've heard about this vaping, I haven't tried it, but hey, if I hand you this pack of bags, I'll get a free kit. So they give you your kit and they give you 18 gram e-lip. You take a toot on it. What's the first thing that's going to happen? Yeah, they don't. I mean, at least last year, what they were doing, they were giving the kits out, taking them to the stand, get put the juice in, telling them all about the kit, and and, 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 and so on. To be fair, as a as a relatively new to this scene, that's what I was expecting to see. But this this year, yeah, use the kit. Let's take a picture. Goodbye. Yeah. No follow up, and and my show with Chris has, has been all about the follow up, because if you don't, you just lose people, and that's not what you want. Especially if you're giving away stuff to get replacement coils, and you don't tell people when the coils are going to need to be changed, and information such as this, yeah, throw it in the bin and go and buy a packet of fat. Uh, to be honest, the coil was so small in this thing, I actually threw it out. I didn't realise there was a, a replacement. I wasn't expecting a, a replacement coil in a pen like this small. Weirdly enough, I thought it was all built in, but there was nothing. It was like, there you go. But the, if, if the top is for them now, you can get the tops for them in Poundland. And, yeah. that, and they'll just screw on and you put your liquid in. Let's be honest, would you really trust Poundland CE4s or CD5s? They all come from China. I mean, if you get really desperate, you can buy them in Iceland now as well. It's a long yeah. way to go, isn't it, Iceland? Because I, uh, I don't know if you can see that. That's the replacement coil. I don't know if I took that apart there, but... Mm -hmm. But you see, even that initiative was screwed over by Blue and Vipe because they sent representatives to the front door and were giving away their stuff at the front door. I didn't actually see it happen. I'm only going on what Empire Vape Co said. Apparently they had Blue and Vipe handing out bags with um, their kits in them. Oh, I didn't see that. I, I didn't. I missed that bit. I know they were giving out, I know Vipe were giving out the kit if you signed up for them. Yeah, that's how I ended and, up with this one. And Blue was selling the engraved kits. Hmm. And then they were giving them away on the stage. And under quite substantial pressure from the people hmm. on the stage saying, bring your stuff stuff up, you don't want to take it home, bring your stuff up. You know, you know that's, a, that's a bit of pressure. So, Iceland sell the 88 brand. Yes, they do. Yeah, same thing, Poundland have got 88. Iceland have got it on their check. And the one thing I, I tell you what I do like about Poundland, right? Poundland do a disposable ego battery as well. So you could go into Poundland before going out for a night out. You could buy a bottle of juice, a disposable battery, and, and a top. Three quid, and you've got an emergency setup. M16, no, blue are owned by um, British American. Me, me, I prefer the Haribo in Poundland, Chris. But you see, this is the thing that says pay the vapor. The turn of the year. Because if you used to go to W.H. Smith's and buy your magazine, you used to go to the checkout, they used to be a big cigarette this one. They've all gone now, they've been replaced by e-cigarettes only. The tide is turning, the only problem is it's not turning quite the right 
Is that, is that um, IP infringement? Uh, oh, I do like tiny tasty. Tasty. Oh, yeah, I sweets and eat You know, just in case you get a cease and desist letter for um, blatantly ripping off sweet brands and saying, no, we haven't. We've been doing our own thing. So anyway, Chris, I'm at 10% battery, so I'm going to have to go. Okie dokie. So what I'll do okay. is, um, just bear with me a second, I shall... And uh, you you don't know whose car that was I was following today with the uh, rather interesting Vapor license plate? No, I don't. But I'm guessing it was a Vapor. Yeah, that, that's somebody that's very keen into vaping, isn't it? It is. Morris executives. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one QOS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway. Yeah. I'll, uh... Uh, so, so I'm glad you opened that uh, packet of Haribo very, very loudly there, because nobody heard anything for the last minute. Uh, so, Mr. Chunkmeister, mm -hmm. uh, good to catch up with you last week. Uh, yeah, it was good. Hopefully the next vape shows are a little better than this one. We, we did have a good evening, didn't we? We're talking about a couple that were vapors in uh, Solo. Yes. That was good. Uh, yes, um, yes. Uh, it, yes, it was, uh, it was a very nice evening. Um, I, I do like a night out in London. It, uh, it's outrageously expensive. Especially when you buy most of the rounds. No problem. Right. Yeah, actually, if I put that into my vape spreadsheet, I'm about level now. <laughs> I didn't drink that much. <laughs> okay, cool. That's, that's uh... good. Nice to have met you, and uh, and it's uh, nice uh, that you've uh, that we've had a threesome tonight. And for once, I wasn't the bitch. Oh, yeah. Who was? But... Well, there's plenty of time. There's plenty of time. Yeah. Okay. Catch you there. Thanks. Bye bye. Cheers, Cheers, Chris. Okay. So let's shuffle these Go around on. now. Okay. So holster is gone. I'm still here. We're still here. Yeah. Until my screen decides to work out what it's doing. Why is Jay saying incoming? Incoming. There's nobody calling in Jay unless you're planning to, and I wouldn't advise it. Now this is. Uh, let me just do a bit of uh, growing, should I say? But no, I think. If it hadn't been for the social aspect this weekend, it would have been a complete bust. The social aspect was the weekend. Um, I mean, when you consider that vaping post Mark and I have been friends for a long time, that was the first time we had a vaping person. Yeah, cool. And it was, cra it was crazy. It was like a scene from 10 with Bo Derek because we just saw each other. And just aim straight for each other. That sounds a bit dodgy. Let me just uh, adjust the screen for a bit. It would have been nice to see more reviewer community there, or more of the more recognisable faces. I think it was just—it was just an absence of everything. Hmm. Vendors, people information knowledge um you know with this it was it was a shell if tom had carried on the work he started last year that event would have been fantastic definitely Just, 
podcast, I know he's got his detractors and he's got his haters. I have a lot of time for Tom and I have a lot of respect for Tom for what he's done for the community and for the industry. And at the heart of it, he's hyper. Yeah. And he does, and he gets things done. Everything he does is for vaping for the vape community. And he doesn't ask for anything from it. He just wants to do it because he knows it, he thinks it's what's right. Fortunately, through matters we're not going to go into here, he left Fake Finder in January. And basically, that whole organisation went. And it's hit the floor. It can't get any lower. So I'm hoping, beyond hope, that they don't think that it'll be a good idea to have a London Vape Show next year unless they get down on their hands and knees and throw as much money at Tom as they can to get him back to organise it. I, I don't think it would work. I think they've done too much damage in this show. There was a bit of damage on the first show, but this one, I think, is a, you know, you can't recover from it. Even if another show came up with a different, or a different um, name and so on, they couldn't do it. I reckon if you and I got together with Stevie Nichols and organised a vape meet, have more success than they had at the weekend. Why? Because we know what we're doing. Nipple fast. The biggest problem with was the whole organisation because you had an organiser that was behind it who spent the entire event hidden in the organiser's office. Couldn't find hide nor hair of him anywhere vendors now that have turned around and said in no way shape or form they ever support a vape finder event again because they've lost money you've got vapors who have said they will never attend another vape finder event again because of how bad it was it's been damaged that much you've now got to think anybody who does an event in london now hmm. any vendors are going to be think got to be saying to themselves well, what guarantees and assurances are you going to give to me that this event is not going to be like the last that last event? I mean, as much as I hate to bring it up again, but like, you can book a booth at Vape Jam, or I can pay a lot of money because Excel is not cheap. But you know what you get. You're getting organisation, you're getting professionalism, and most of all, you're getting footfall. So, of course you're going to go there. Expo at Birmingham, same thing. Hopefully this new one in Manchester, same thing. But if you're not able to say to people, right, we've got an event on, we're going to charge you even five grand for your booth. If that company doesn't make that five grand back, there's no point in them being there. other thing with this weekend I don't think the trade orders will cover what they've spent out no. and th I think that was the nice thing about Chef's Fest was the fact that it was small I think I, I'm not sure whether the venue was offered at a really reduced price or even free and you know there were there were there were only literally just over a dozen vendors there and you know, Van Vanilla Vips was one of them. And I spoke to them and said, you know, would you do it again? And they said, definitely. No shadow of a doubt. We, we jumped to it. So you've got to think. Stop the question in chat. Dion, yes, you can leave a battery in a mech mod overnight. You can leave a battery in any mod overnight. It's not actually switched on. Yeah. You've got the safety switch locked. Yeah, just make sure it's locked and try not to leave it resting on the, bat on the, uh, the button. Oh, Chef's Fest actually looked like a good event. It was just the fact it was. It was. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, my journey on, like, I went up on a bus. I, I don't drive up. So I catch a coach up. Now, this time I went National Express because the price was pretty much the same. But there was more buses in the hour than uh, Mega Bus. But at the end of the day, that was, you know, you, you can, if you, if you book 
the right time you can get a megabus from from London to Cardiff for under a ten a return you know so people in London if they start out early and, and, and you know want to they can come to the, you know the Cardiff uh, ones and still get a better atmosphere and and every they did a giveaway the, the first hundred through the door at a, at a bag with stuff in it and it was key rings leaflets there was um, 150 mil of juice or 180 mil of juice um it was a, it was a goodie bag mm. and, and and you know in in the same light as you know when you used to be a kid you get a, a goodie bag from the shop with all the whistles and sweets and whatever it mm. was a goodie bag I could purchase a little screwdriver with interchangeable bits that's perfect for RDA. I could purchase loads of little bits that would suit vapors. I could put them in a bag, it's cost me a fiver to do. But people will think, blimey, look at that screwdriver, that's impressive. Look at that key ring, that's impressive. And they'll think they've got value for money. Because the unfortunate thing is with a lot of people who go to vape shows, their thinking is, I've spent 20 quid on a ticket. I want 20 quid's worth of free shit to come back the other way. Otherwise, there was no point in me going. Because they expect the free shit to basically pay. And, you, and in a way, you can see that mentality as well, man. You, know, you, wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to go to a show and come away with nothing at all. But then again, people go at the shows to buy what they want find out new information but you know i mean let's be honest that liquid which was being thrown out on saturday mm. if you go to vape club it's three pound 99 for 10 mil and there are sites out there now doing premium juices for 99p a bottle or 85p a bottle mm. you know reduced currently if you use the code bargains 15 you can get their juice of the week the other week I bought, um, I put the site up on, on the uh, thing, I bought 20 bottles of Just Jam for 20 quid. Mm. You know, which is a fraction, it's like half the cost in, in shops. And if you can do that without lifting a finger, what is the incentive of going to the, the vape uh, meets other than socialising, you know? Anybody who takes a vape meet to mean more than oh, let's go and have a look at the new hardware or let's go and meet friends. There's a problem. Because if you're going there, expecting to come back that you haven't paid for or a mod that you haven't paid for or a tripper or a tank, whatever it is, you shouldn't be going to that to what? get free shit. You should be going there to see what's coming out that you can buy, therefore support community and supporting the industry and promoting them to actually innovate new stuff and with all the Facebook groups on Twitter Instagram everywhere there are so many people that are involved in social media to do with vaping you should be going to meet up in person and actually meet these people and talk to these people and while it is nice to get free stuff and things, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be the focus if, if you go expecting free stuff, yeah, it shouldn't be the focus. I mean, let's be honest. Look at Vapefest. Mm. Vapefest is a classic example. It's a free event. Yet people were going there expecting free liquid and free everything else. Now, admittedly, there is one company that every time Vapefest is on is always doing free stuff. And that's Teachers. Because they started off throwing 10 mil boxes out like you wouldn't believe. And they had refill stations you could refill your tank or free. Or didn't have chef's flavours. They always to give away three, 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 three bottles. And you got the stand and they'd make them up. <laughs> the last vape fest I went to, it was, yeah, come to, come to our tent for your free 10 mil. And that's all they were getting. And the amount of people that were bitching that they were only getting 10 mil of tea juice for free. Now, don't get me wrong, tea juice is a brilliant juice if you've just quit smoking and gone on to 
Heathcliff later and everything else. They did the original for Red Astaire as well. But the more you get into vaping and the more you appreciate how many different companies and how many different places there are, I can't remember the last time I had a bottle of tea juice because, to be honest, it was just too rank for me the last time I tried it. Is that a technical uh, term? It's got its place. If you're going to a free event and expecting more than a free technical bottle of juice, and that's the good thing about that's the good thing about chess fest was um, it was free to get in you know and no um like it was and it was just, the social thing was nice they, they had the bar i chatted to um jules mama vapes and and steve and a couple of other people that were that watched the show and and so on it was uh it was nice to just chill out and mrs chunk went over because it's it was in the cardiff city stadium and on the other side there was lots of shops so she went shopping came back in afterwards with a baby in the pram and there was no issues with it because because it was quite a large place it wasn't clouded out like um some venues and it was more it was it had that relaxed atmosphere not the manic expo sort of thing it was more like a, a big vic meet and that's what we need more of I mean, if say if, if there was a if there was a shop in London that say every couple of months had, had, had a, a vape meet, I'd be more inclined to sp to spend a tenner to catch the bus up for the day and come back on the same day rather than you know go to these events. A couple of years ago, Noble Vaping opened their first shop in Shoreditch in East London. They contacted myself and Devil Vapor via Facebook and said, if you can come down, we'd really love to have you there. So we made plans, we went down there. They had 400 people turn up to that shop open. And there was no guarantee of free shirts. They threw out a few t-shirts. They had bottles of juice out of control. People were literally throwing money at them to buy stuff. And they did their one year anniversary of that shop, same thing happened again. And it was a meeting of vapors. They had their cloud comp, of course, they did yeah. price. But it was a meeting of vapors all coming together to socialize, welcome a new shop, try stuff out, and everything like that. That's what it was expected to be, and that's what it was. And it was a far better event these big experts. I mean I used to go when, when Vapor Queen was opening Cardiff I used to go down there and they used to have cloud comp evenings but they wouldn't do the stuff they'd do tricks and they'd also throw a, a couple of other things in like vaping a, a really nasty juice or um, one, of, one of the competitions was take an inhale of, of vapor bend down and twerk or something and it was it was a laugh it was a bit of fun and um, and the other events that are going on, like I know that I think the Queen's sister company, uh, Vape Trace, they always have a, they, they, they nearly always have a um, Halloween. They have a Halloween uh, vape meet. Mm. So you know you you've got you've got that to go to, like you know, and uh, they have summer barbecues where it's a case of come on down, you have. Uh, you buy a raffle ticket for a pound, which is mm. entered for a raffle for some juice. But for that pound, you get a bottle of beer and a hot dog. A pound wouldn't pay for that. Yeah. You, you know, you see, so they're already at a loss. But it's about the community and, and you know, you know, getting people together. I'm going to get some beers. I'll be back in a sec. Oh my god, I'm solo casting on the network. Oh god, I've got nothing to say. I've got nothing prepared. Oh. Help! Should I talk to the people in chat? I'm having their own conversation without you, love. There are still people in chat. You mean there are people that have had, sat here for two hours? <laughs> Gary, don't need to do all your shopping this, mate. I gave you the seven colour roll up here from the smog. Unicorns, mate. Did you, did you see Seven Colour? 
Yeah. Oh, you're, right. oh, you're talking to Gary then. Yeah, would you give somebody your last Rolo? Yeah, if he was multicolored, yes. What do you think about this weekend? You had Purge there, oh, like the Excalibur of Mech Mods. Why could they not have thought, all right, we'll take 500 raffle tickets, we'll charge a pound a ticket, sell 500 tickets, give away a mod that retails for 200 Somebody's getting something out of it, and we're making a profit. Because I know they're not going to chuck a perch ball off the stage, but it's just an example of what you can do at a vape me. Although, I th thinking back, I can remember the Rogue did a throw out of a, a Rogue mod, oh, didn't they, in Expo a couple of years ago. It was in um, Vapor Queen there, uh, Gary. But it's, it's, a case, it's a case like I, I've made a joke and I said, oh, well, Chunk Fest next year. You know, yeah. you could probably get more people want, you know, think, oh, well, I've come down for the, for the weekend. Doss and the set, you have a couple of beers. It's, you know. How many people can you fit in your shed? 10, 15? Three. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get 15 people, charge them a tenner each. That's 150 quid. You go and buy some naff smock fucking kit, sell them a raffle ticket for a pen, give it away. You know, you can have quite a successful event go in there. You can have Jay come down and build coils for you. Oh, obviously Jay's coils. <laughs> Jay doesn't Jay doesn't build coils anymore, he's got that upside down vamo. I mean, it'd be a nice intimate like me, you know. It would be very, very intimate. Just little note on the bottom of the other, like, bring your own look. PG, uh, yeah. Look, let's say it's like Stevie Nichols. If he held a vape in that shop, I know so many people that would turn up for it. Yeah. Because they respect him because he's been he reviewed for a long time. He's been in the community a long time and he's a genuinely lovely guy. When you can say that about a shop that's only been open, what, just got about six, eight months, something like that now? He's got a bloody awesome shop sign. Mm. Well, he's absolutely awesome shop sign. I mean, where he got that, that signage for his shop from, I don't know. I don't know. I nearly just walked past it. Well, it's a really brilliant logo he's got. I don't know who designed <laughs> it. But if he said, I'm going to throw a vape me and gave people a couple of months notice, that shop would be packed. And he would have all the reviewers down there because they'd all turn out for it. He'd have all the vapors down there. He could even get the companies involved because he knows quite a few of the distros. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. he'd have a really successful event out of it. I say, moving on, I was going to say, but linking in, is when I went to, to his shop, I spent two or three hours there. I mean, it's not a short journey from the middle of London. It's an, it's, you know, it's an hour and a half in the tube. Well, it's, not. Mm -hmm. it's an hour and a half the way you went. No, I didn't. I caught the. Um, there's only right. one lane. That, there's only one lane that goes there, isn't there? Yeah, the district line. If you yeah. Don't have to get around London, you can actually get there a lot quicker. Oh, okay. I just got on the district line. But anyway, spent a couple of hours there, just just chatting and chatting and chatting. And it's like it should be. It, it was you know. It should be more. Um, it should be more of a social side of, of things, you know. I'd rather spend three hours talking to to somebody like that than three hours sat down twiddling my thumbs, at the, you know, wandering round, round and round and round at the Vape Expo. Yeah. Well, my sofa got was a nice, nice sofa in the corner, coffee machine, panini maker. No, I'll just get, I'll just get, you know, just get um, one of these, boiler, you know, just get a microwave and a bloody pack of Wesslers and some, some hot dog buns, you know. You just sat, you could just sit there with the beers and whatever, all evening, you know, all day. 
We've had round here three vape shops for six months. Two of, one of them's a shop and the other two are lounges. The shop, the stock they've got in there is pathetic. It's just literally not worth going in there because they've got nothing worthwhile. And one of the lounges, you walk up to it and the front is completely covered in graffiti. It's just And you walk in and you've got one wall of vape stuff and the rest of it is a coffee machine, a microwave and all the cafe stuff. They actually do more business in food and coffee than they do in vaping stuff. So why have the vape stuff? What's the point? Mm -hmm. So I spent a good good time at uh, Steve's shop, and then I went to a couple of other shops as well. Yeah. So I went to oh, vape and bolts. Before then, no, no, no. We'll come to that. We will come to that. You didn't go into Cigari. You really upset. I didn't go to Cigari. I went to another shop, and um, I went to the Vape Superstore, uh, just around the corner from Good Street. Uh, they've only opened. Um, five weeks ago and the people there were quite nice to talk to and quite chatty yeah yeah I've got, I've got a sore wrist is there um i sent a review sample from vape superstore when they first started is it vape superstore or vape something vape express I don't vape know. but they started in an office building in watford as a mail order company and they said they don't want to review that very same I taste hunter that's in that bag you've got to give to Jay. They sent me one. Jay, they might not get here. The glass on the tank was cracked. Then I went to try the mod and it only worked every other time you took the battery out and put the battery back in. And it was a brand new mod. And I said to him, I said, do you really want me to review this? Oh yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. I said, yes there is. You need to send me another one. And they refused me. So, <clears throat> so this so this box by you is this is reviewed by you. It's been used once. You could have you couldn't sign it for me, could you? But it's going to Jay so Jay can hopefully do something with it. Because Jay's a master of repairing. But this is the thing, we've also got all these asshole companies now that don't deserve to have anything to do with vaping mm. opening shops in central London yeah. and places like that. And if you walk in there, it's all bright and breezy and everything else, but the mm. underside of it, they are some of the most dodgy companies going. Yeah, I mean there were two there were two people in, in the in the shop and they and they uh, they both they did to be honest, they both knew their stuff, which was good. But when we go on to the third shop, Camden Town. So I went to Vape and Vaults and I heard a lot about it and I seen some pictures. The pictures make it look like it's massive. It's not, it's, it's quite small. But I was soaked to the skin by this time because I didn't have a coat and I was wearing a vest and shorts. So I was dripping. So I sat, just sat there and to be honest, they got the testers on the outside. I like the way they've done that, you press the button and it, present your mouth and whatever that's quite cool so i sat on the bench and i looked over to the corner so in the corner they've got this nice big cupboard and there's all these awards from vapor round all nicely laid out in the corner but part of it's obscured by another uh, bit of signage which is an icos Mm -hmm. sign so I then looked back at the awards and what they were for and it was for outstanding vape shop 2000 and whatever so you get in these this shop is getting awards for being an outstanding shop and it sells ACOS knowing where the awards have come from you can kind of understand that but Oh, it's, it's just ludicrous it, it 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 it's it makes you just think where is where is this thing where is it all going well i'll give you another example you know the tpd quite well mm. 
as a review as we had to basically bloody digest it. <clears throat> and you also know about the advertising rules concerning e Well, one of the rules states that if you own a vape shop, you can't have any advertising facing out towards the street. It has to face into the shop. No, the echo shops. There's a certain vape shop up here that I won't name because I get on quite well. The owner's a complete douchebag. Walk past their shop and they've got a poster in the window facing out to the street for the jewel. Mistake number one. I've got a poster, the IQOS, facing me out to the street. And that's the same in all four of their branches. So they're basically saying, screw you to the TPD, screw you to the law, we're going to do whatever we want. You go to UK e cig store, well, they do things properly. Now, a lot of people knock at UK e cig store because they're expensive or whatever, but they know what they're doing, and the people that work there are vapors. And the people that work there are listened to by the management. I mean, we have got so many vape shops around London, and you can literally see just by walking past them. What sort of person owns them? And what sort of, sort of people work there? So I, I went into the um, the Vip Superstore and they had frost pods. I said, How much are they? Three pods, ten out, which is kind of a good price, standard price. And they had dinner ready Nick Salts. So yeah. I, I picked up a bottle of 10 mil Nick Salts. Because you, you just brought the TPD in. So I went to another local shop the other day and I said, have you got any uh, Dunlady Nick shop salts? No, we haven't. We've only got that there. You can, you, you're quite welcome to have it if you want. Okay. All right. So, dear lady. So this is a shop in the UK that's been sent. Whoopsie. And... As a close-up, so this is 30 ml bottles, 20 milligram dinner lady liquids that has been sent to a shop in the UK. Yep. Now I know I know I know I've pissed off dinner lady because they haven't sent me anything to review since I give them some bad reviews, such as to be expected by companies that don't like honesty. Um, but. That, that leads some questions to be answered, I think. I had done um, fun with Dinner Lady. Because I did actually review their first liquids and they carried on contacting me after I said I wasn't going to do any more. And one of their marketing people is, was, was at the time on my Facebook friends list. And she said to me, she said, Oh, you were at Expo, why did you come over? And I wanted to get rid of them once and for all because I'd had enough. I said, sorry, I was too busy taking a dump. I said, it was more important for me to go to the toilet than come and see you and try your crap liquids. And they actually stopped contacting me after that because they were literally emailing me three times a week. But since the TPD, their liquids have become unvapable. They've, they've changed the recipe to a point where it's not the same. And i, I got to say, I'll say if the original range of Dinner Lady, the original recipe mm. is still a really good range. If you can find a original bottle of the Dinner Lady stuff, and I, I stocked up on lemon tart, for example, but if you can find the original stuff, it is a good liquid. The newer stuff, the apple pie and the blackberry tart or the orange tart, no way is that a premium juice. Okay. Dinner Lady lemon tart. When it came out, pre-TPD, was the citrus vape on the market bar none. It was a superb liquid. I loved it. I went through 120 ml of it in three days. Because it was that good. I mean, I contacted them to get a, a wholesale account so I could buy 20 bottles of this stuff. Because it was, it, it, could, it was, it was like crack. It was, it was just a good, solid but, flavour. Anybody who misses that original lemon tart, the 
there's two companies I'll send you to. The first one is Rocha Project, which mm -hmm. was the Demon Vapor. I did actually try that at Steve's shop. Yeah, Lemon Rush. Absolutely superb flavour. Can't vape enough of it when I can get hold of it. The second one is Exceptional Vapes Lemon Tangy Tart. Okay, I'll have That's to try actually that one. better than the original Dinner Lady Lemon Tart. And I vaped 300 mil of that without even thinking about it because it was so superb. Mm. And that's the thing about exceptional vapes. Carl Fairbrother, really lovely guy. Another true vapor. The flavors he produces are absolutely What he goes out to bit to make, he actually hits on the head every time. And I can't recommend it highly enough. But it just, to me, proves that there are... You get all this big marketing and everything. From all these companies, we're the best juice ever. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. There are other companies out there that are doing way better on a way smaller budget, advertising everything, and keep getting overlooked. Yeah, I totally agree with you. There, I mean, if you look back at um, Dinner Lady's uh, stand at Expo the other, the other year, it was massive, it spanned the main run. They must have paid a fortune for it. I think they paid, I think they, they took 20,000 pounds worth of stock to, to shift they know they do know their marketing yeah. but unfortunately there are other things that trip them up but you see they were very clever the first expo they did i don't know if you remember it the first the first expo that the lady turned up at the uh, i can't remember where they were handing the desserts out they, they, they did that and they also um the good the one thing i did like about that was they had the main stand, which catered for consumers, and off to the corner was another little stand where the business to business were being dealt with. Yeah. But they were clever because they were handing out the exact same desserts that their flavours were supposed to be. So what were you doing? You were walking up there, having the dessert, then trying the e-liquid with the taste of the dessert still in your mouth. And they did the same thing with the drinks when they had the yeah it's clever marketing because you've already got in your mind because you've eaten the dessert what it should taste like and the good thing is the original range did taste like the desserts oh don't get me wrong mm. the, the lemon tart they did was absolutely super mm. the strawberry custard they did was crap the rice pudding was and nice. The tart was crap as well. Because they marketed it like this is the cool thing you used to have at school. No. You must have a really crap school then because you didn't taste anything like it. The best range they bought out when they first started, apart from the lemon tart, was the tornado range. The, uh... The, um, cooling. Yeah. Although I did like some of the 11 11s. The uh, the cherry cigar, cherry pipe. yeah, cherry pipe that was nice, and the uh, the mint, the mint tobacco. But they got the thing with dinner lady is they got too big too quick and now they think oh god we can do whatever we like and nobody's ever going to complain. And this is what happens with a lot of the liquid companies, which is why I say to anybody who will listen, support the smaller companies because they they actually listen if you've got a problem. And they will actually adjust it. And they will sort it out with you. I mean, I think that that's the project. Jay will always sort out a problem. Carl, exceptional. If there's a problem with one of his juices, he will sort it out like that. He won't even think twice. And they are there for vapors. They are not there for the mass market. Because you can now buy Dinner Lady in Asda. I do, though. Yeah by Doozy Vape in Asda. Now, I was one of the original reviewers in the UK that reviewed the original Doozy Vape liquids, and they were all shit. And we actually got in contact, the five reviewers that got it, with the company to say, your juice is a shit, there's a problem. Oh no, it's you, it's not us. That was their immediate reaction. And I have never touched a Doozy Vape product since. Because they just don't care. And this is where I think we need to go now. We need to go as a community back to how it used to be, whereas it was done by vapors, for vapors. Yeah. And 
for the community yeah. because it's the community that is promoting vaping. It's the community that will keep vaping going. Well, going on from that, you can always move on to the, the other focus, which is DIY. You know, there's a, if you think if you think there's a juice up there you like, you've only got to look at e-liquid recipes, and there'll probably be a dozen people who try to clone or copy it. Or actually, some of the recipes have been leaked from the manufacturers to the site as well. Now, can you remember um, Muffin Man, Policeman, and all that? The Muffin Man was a very simple recipe. It had two flavours, and the combined strength of the flavours was 5%, and it was literally 2.5% of this, 2.5% of that. Hmm. And it was Fuji Apple and uh, something cinnamon roll. Yeah. 5%. You can make yourself litres of that for pennies. Exactly. And, like I said, you find a juice you like, check out the DIY communities, because there's a lot of help out there, and... Obviously, you just, you just need to ask somebody that does DIY already and they can give you advice. Fix peach custard, slightly modified. Blackcurrant juice, eucalyptus and mint, mint instead of menthol. They are my two all day, every day juices that I make. That's all I make. And whether you're a, 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 a proper mixologist and you spend time formulating like I do, or whether you go out and just buy a, bot, a bottle shot there are alternatives you know a bottle shot of strawberries and cream might not be like your favorite strawberries and cream brand but if you're paying a tenth of the price yep. you get you don't mind it too much and the other thing i've noticed since we've started diying if you go out and buy shop bought juice now and that's the flexibility you've got with you with diy i mean flavor boss did a clone of lemon tart at the time it was spot on but people noticed that if you let it steep for more than four months the lemon died off so then around the community you learned that if you buy a litre or shot of it you only put in and make it up to 900 mil mm. and then the flavor stays yeah. there's uh but there's so much out there flexibility as well i mean that as i say is black currant juice all I've got to do is swap the black currant out for cherry. I've got cherry tunes. If I can find a strong enough apple, I can swap it out. Have apple tunes. If you've got, if you if you find a bottle of loony, you can have loony tunes. Mm. But this is the thing: with certain recipes, you can swap the fruits out, and it's still a nice bait because you know the base in it. And mixology is not as hard as people make out it is if you know pretty much i mean give me an example Paul Sonic in chat richard he's just started diying he's just on the learning part now of what works with what and what doesn't work with what but he's learning about how you can use things like certain like to lift up citrus fruits rather than having a cooling thing and using marshmallow as a sweetener a lot of people don't think like that, but when you get into it, there's so many different tweaks you can do to slightly change your flavour away or whatever. And it's basically customisable to you. Mm. That's not something you can get going and buying a juice off a shelf. And if unless you... you I was just going to say, unless you buy two different brands and mix them together and hope they work. I mean, there's always the... Uh the golden rule of DIY. If you make some juice and it doesn't taste very nice, just add menthol. Menthol recovers 99% of juice out there. Unless you're doing like some real extreme bakery stuff. You make some fruit juices and you don't quite like it, stick some menthol in it. There you are, bang, done. And it saves you from throwing it out. Or you could just throw it out at that price, but you can, you can recover. The citrus is a bugger if you don't know over citrus something or you can under citrus something to the point you can't taste the citrus a couple of drops of coolada with a citrus it lifts the flavor right up the roof. 
Now you do re you you have been watching chat, haven't you? You do realise that that uh, Kerak is leaking you a secret super special re recipe. I don't mind anybody who has it, but as I say, if you prefer cherry, substitute the black currant for a cherry. Although you might need to practice uh, and try a couple of different cherries because cherries are a difficult one to, but to get. Eucalyptus from Inawera gives the same curdling as menthol, but it doesn't take your throat. Out. There are certain flavours I'll, I'll always go straight to, like for for a grape I'll always go to Loran's. Uh, the only diff only problem with that is it's, it's it is purple and it stains. And um, you know there's certain flavours like a raspberry I'll only go for certain uh, certain uh, companies. And you, if it's, if you've got a cheap raspberry flavour, it ends up tasting a bit woody. Mm. But these are things that you can pick up from the forums and so on. But um, I don't know if uh, Carrick will pull in a link to Isig recipes and stick that up. There are loads of recipes, thousands and thousands and thousands of recipes out there. Yeah, e I think it is. Mm. I've got a couple of recipes up there. Uh, if I could clone Brett Zest, I'd be happy. Hmm. But then again, why bother cloning Brett Zest? Just go to Decadent Vapors and buy the concentrate. The one flavour from, de from Decadent Vapors I like is... Co oh my god, what's it called? Um, Mentholyptus. Mentholyptus is good stuff. I reviewed that. And they sent it to me deliberately because they knew I like my menthol. Yeah. Don't try this, it'll blow your head off. And another good one is, um, I think it's called Orange Nella. And if you mix them, it's it's a, it's a cracker. <laughs> oh, does anybody want an eating to recipe for bubblegum millions? Because it's on eatingrecipes.com. <laughs> No, I can't just... call it bubble gum millions like millions though, because you'll get a cease and desist. No, there I... were two flavours that I loved, and I mean really loved, from decadent vapors that they don't do anymore. Mm. People still think I'm insane. The spicy hot wings and the crispy bacon. The spicy hot wings was nice. It was part of the American five, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The crispy bacon was good as well it was something different because I don't think we have anywhere near enough savoury flavours. I'm going to put a link in chat to one of my juices, one of my recipes on uh, Having said recipes. that, I did have a vendor once send me cheese and onion. That is rank. That was a dare um, juice we had once at one of the uh, vape meats. And it was like, okay, cheese and onion, I know what to expect. Oh my God, I didn't expect that. So if anybody's looking at that recipe I've just put up, I've gone through there to explain how I've used the flavours that are in the in there. Using the raspberry, in aware of raspberry, it's the only one to go for. But I've explained why I put the different flavours in there. Because you use some flavours to lift other flavours. And then you can use other other flavours to lift those. And it's uh, I've just gone through a little if you read just read the notes and now uh, Versatile strawberry shishas for lifting up other flavours. Mm. And if you're doing a, if you're doing a strawberry flavour, one good thing as well is to get different strawberries from different flavour companies, and use them to give it a, add a richness. So you can have strawberry ripe, you can have um, strawberry jam, mm. plain strawberry, and you add say them three strawberries into it. A, a yeah. plain strawberry juice and it's going to taste a lot richer than uh, a plain it's but, like when Perino did their high VG range they did a strawberry cupcake and they sent it to me for review and you know how it is when you review liquids you sometimes pick stuff up you sometimes don't and I took a vape on this and I thought there's more than one strawberry in there and I could pick different notes out. And I said in the review, there's three different strawberries in this. Went to Expo, 
the chief executive of Perino walked up to me and hugged me and I went, what's that? Well, he said, you're the only room here who picked out there were three strawberries in there. He said, you're right. He said, there's three different strawberry concentrates in it. And he said, we had to do that to get the And this is what a lot of people don't realise with DIY. They think, oh, I'll just go and get a strawberry concentrate, whack it in some PG and BG, and it will taste like strawberry. Depends what strawberry you're going for. If you're going for a candied strawberry, more than likely, if you want a fresh strawberry, you can need more than one strawberry. Because <coughs> there's very, very few fresh strawberry concentrates that actually taste like fresh strawberry. Well, I'm enjoying this show tonight because we've gone from lots of negative stuff to lots of positive stuff. To be honest, there were positives to come out of this weekend. It may seem hard to believe, but there were actually positives to take out of this weekend. The positives to take out of this weekend were if you can organise a vape show, do it properly. Yeah. You had the positives of all us lot. Basically, those that have been talking on bloody VC and whatever for ages, all day, that was a positive. And there's the new people we've met as well, which is also. Mm. And the fact that we got to go and sit on Rick's bench, which was a major positive. <laughs> oh, the bottom bench. That's a pilgrimage every year that is to go and sit on Rick Mal's bench in Hammersmith. And there's a tradition because you're supposed to sit on it and you're supposed to put two fingers up to the sky and that's exactly what we did. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't bash each other with a newspaper. Didn't that one, unfortunately. Oh. Well, I think I should have come over, rather than go in the rain to Vapen Vaults, I should have come over to you, sir. What should have happened was we should have organised it beforehand when we knew you were coming up and everything and I would have taken you out for a day and taken you around all the decent vape shops. But that was still being more organised. <laughs> My bloody vape drawer is more organised than that fucking show was. I'm just saying something. But to me, I'm the kind of guy that will always find positive somewhere. I don't like being negative all the time. I like being positive. So therefore, I will always find a positive somewhere. So I think that, that we got, we've got to now, after this, we've now got to work out a plan of action. So we've got to work out how we get Steve Nichols to, to renovate meat. Well, it's simple. The first thing we do is we find a pub. Is there one near him? Yes. Good. That's a good start. We get him bladdered, completely bladdered, and we plant subtle suge suggestions into his head. Or we could just tell him that you're doing it. And then if that doesn't work, I grab him round the and I'll say, listen, arsehole, you're putting on the fucking bike, you've got nothing to say about it, it's fucking good. Mm. You know what a good opportunity would be to have a vape meet near Christmas, where people can come down, go to the vape meet, and maybe their partners who are not interested in vaping can go off to the town and do the shopping on Bond Street and so on. And yeah, we'll someone to play Santa. Well... There's only one big fat man that brings presents in this house in Christmas, and it's not Santa. There's only one big fat man that would fit the sweat on the horse, but then he's taken that box and then given that vaping, but then he can... Butterbean. No comment. That was so funny when, when that picture surfaced. Is there a decent flapjack juice anywhere off the shelf? No. There used to be. That was close to it. But they stopped doing it. Lancashire Steam Company used to do one. Tell you what I used to like from Lancashire Steam Company <laughs> was they used to do um, boiler water. Yes. Which was, it was a cinnamon and eucalyptus, I think it was. So you've got fireballs and, you got, oh my god, that's good stuff. Lancashire Steam Company also used to do useless dunker, which was chocolate hot milk. And that was fucking good. And that's another flavour that's hard to do is chocolate. You can't, you've got to have cream with chocolate, you can't just use chocolate. And that's what a lot of people do, they make a chocolate juice up and think, oh, that's horrible, isn't it? Funny enough, there was only one company I know that absolutely nailed chocolate. And that was Viking, when they did 
in Hod because that chocolate in Hod was absolutely superb. But unfortunately, they don't do it anymore, so. Yeah, Blackjack Bailo. The closest one you've got to it is After Dark from Karina. Chocolates out there are more hot chocolate rather than Cadbury chocolate. Or the Acoquis. No, that is the truth, Gary. I was taking up boxing. Gary, Gary, have a look on his Twitter. There's a picture of him. And that's what surfaced on Saturday because the look on my on postman's face and the first person he came running to was me. He said, You are not going to believe. And he showed me, and I stood there, and I wet myself. But you see, that was another positive, you see, because we had a good fucking laugh. Exactly. It, and, it, and it is all about having a laugh, isn't it? I actually felt sorry for all those reviewers that turned out. Because they were stuck around that bloody table. A table that they had to source along with the chairs, and they had to build their own sofas. Now, was it was it right that Mark Solon was put down to do a talk for NNA and yes. didn't and didn't even know about it? Didn't know anything about it? It was in the program. It was on the website. He didn't know. See, that was another thing that annoyed me. The whole speaker's corner thing and all that was all pushed off into a nice mm. section of area where there should have been advocacy coming mm. on stage. It was last time. The last time they had it all on stage. And even if they got to put the booths around, you know, if, if they got to enclose it to keep the noise from everything else down, there's no reason why they couldn't put the screens up, have the talk on the stage, exactly. and then take them back down and put them out of the way. And that would have left space for more vendors. But again, it wasn't about advocacy, it was about money. Because you can't say that show was about anything other than money when you take ten thousand pound off a tobacco company just to run the event and that's the thing that really sticks in my gut is the fact of how much money they took and there were other conversations going on where i heard stuff that i'm not going to repeat on a live show about the sort of tactics they were using to get shops to stock them and uh, you, just you know they were desperate to get vendors and I spoke to one vendor and they were contacted Wednesday to, to, to fill a space. But basically London Vape Show was funded by Big Tobacco because if it hadn't have been for that happening that event wouldn't have gone ahead. And that's the one that really is the kick in the nuts. I think it's unavoidable though now, isn't it? With the, the tobacco companies bringing out their own solutions, their own vape solutions. The only way it's going to be stopped or lessened is if we as a community actually do something and say something and actually kick up a stink about it and keep pushing. I just spotted a juice in the corner of my eye. It's like the whole copyright infringement thing that Steve though talking about in islands in islands tonight the only reason that that's still a problem is because there's certain vapors that still buy it if you stop buying it the companies will stop producing it. so that's a that's a juice called big popper i i love this i love this stuff you know juice reviews may vary and all that is is bavarian cream and sweet cream I remember reviewing. You have no taste. I got press ganged into reviewing that along with three other juices. They were you, you, the you have no taste it's in juice. You obviously, have, you obviously have taste because you're with Sam, but uh, yeah. yeah. Is he sucking up to you? He's sucking up to you. Uh -huh. He's saying that I've obviously got taste because I've got you. <laughs> but but not in juice. <laughs> Should, I gave up reviewing. I want treble pay. Why do you think I gave up reviewing? To spend less time reviewing and more time with your lovely wife. No, because I had too much of people f messaging me on Facebook and on by email saying, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You, you tasted it wrong. You tasted it wrong. You did this wrong. 
you did that wrong. Like, fuck this. There is, there is one positive that did come out of this London Vip show, is that at this show, I didn't have a shop owner come up and threaten me for giving him a bad review on Facebook. That's what I had last year. I had this guy come up to me and uh, threatened to get into 50, 50 cuffs because I'd given his shop a bad review. And then when he was talking to me, two other employees, and this is a local shop to me. And, uh, yeah. This, uh, back, back to basics. Back to basics is what we need. One tip I would always give reviewers, don't if you value your life, say that a certain juice tastes like a badger's arse. Because if you happen to bump into the company that made it at an expo, it makes things rather difficult. Uh, okay. so, well, well, as long as you're honest, if it does taste like a badger's ass, you've got to say it tastes like a badger's ass. I was at Expo and Hang Sen collared me. The this was when they were releasing the Sen Series 8. Like vaping lemon flash. I think that recipe that Sam just put in there. Strawberry ripe, strawberry cheesecake, strawberry sweet, uh, strawberry taffy, you mean? But Kevin, Kevin, the one thing I will tell you about reviewers 99% of reviewers that were reviewing liquid are not listening to it. Because I have on several occasions turned around and said that a juice is absolute crap. Yet people I know, people I've got on Facebook and in Twitter and everything else have still gone out and bought it even though they've watched my review. Because what people will do if you review it and say it's crap, people will go out and buy it to see if you're right. And it is ridiculous that people do it. But you could have, literally, you could collect somebody's burger sweats, chuck a bit of strawberry in there, bottle it and tell them it's crap juice. They will still go out and buy it to see if you were right. Even though you've warned yeah. them, reviewers will never be right to a hundred percent of people. You speak for yourself, <laughs> and that goes for hardware, anything. You could even review cotton, and somebody would pick fault with what you've done because it's like, no, I've used it; it's absolutely fantastic. Even though when you've used it, it dry hits every time you fire it up. Did your batteries fall out again? Yes, they did. Oh, don't worry, you knew it would be here soon. My wife went to a vape show with a pocket full of cash and didn't buy a mod. I thought she was eyeing up that perch. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I wish. She's, she's ordered her new mod from eSig1. Oh, it's, um... The Viso. Oh, the Viso. Everywhere in the UK selling it for £49 up. E Sig 1, £39.99. That's a bargain, that is. You should do a show with bargains. <laughs> they, they used to be one. I don't know what happened to it. Nah. Oh, yeah, I remember what happened to it. It went to Gary McShane's personal Facebook. <laughs> Gary F has learned a valuable lesson. If you fuck the world, you end up with a new box full of deals. Yeah, I, 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 I had you in a rumour that you'd managed to bankrupt several members of the vaping community. What people didn't see was the emails I used to get from vendors. And it was along the lines of, that line wasn't selling very well. After Saturday, we've sold out. Thank you very much. The number of times we used to sell vendors out on that, seg on that segment. But the problem is, you can't do it these days because the deals aren't there. You have to get very lucky. It's like over the weekend. There was only one absolutely stonking deal that I saw at that show. And that was the Hog V4 on Valhalla 38mm. You have. But literally, they were doing the Hog V4, the Valhalla 38mm and the batteries. 
was 279 quid, something like that. And that actually equates yeah. to the mud. But the other deals that were there just weren't really worth taking because you could pick them up on the high street for the same amount of money. My thinking is, if you're going to an expo, you're going to a show, you should be able to pick stuff up cheaper. I mean, that that was obviously um, proven wrong, for example, with Vupu at Expo last year. Hmm. Well, they was, Vupu was selling their, their drags and their Vupu 2s for more than the, the, the shop price in the UK. Yeah, but and, and, and a lot more than ordering it from China. Yeah, you... the, thing, the thing with that was there was a few Chinese vendors there that the prices were changing on a day-to-day -day basis because they couldn't work out the exchange rate. Yeah, which was quite good really, because if, if you went to the Sigali stand, they had no clue and they were doing it backwards. So you ended up paying uh, seven-tenths of the price, which they obviously worked it the wrong way around, which is quite nice. Last expo I went to, there was a guy on one of the battery vendor stands. Not being funny, you're coming to an expo in England. You know you're coming to an expo in England. Surely you would send staff that could speak English. And there were these two young Chinese girls, couldn't hardly speak a word of English, talking batteries. And they ended up buying 18650s at a pound each. Good game, good game. Thank you. Nice pussy. Hey, my mother. So is that, is that your pussy or is it Carica's pussy? That's one of four. We have four pussies in this house. Wait for her to get out of the shop. And I'll deliver the punch, man. <laughs> She's going to just deliver the punch. I was going to say four pussies and a cunt, but there you go. I love Anybody who saw me on Saturday wouldn't know exactly how much I love it. Anyways, I tell you what I really enjoyed about Saturday, obviously, when we were sat down. So we sat around the table, me and Holster and Andy, um, and then you and uh, Kerrika came on. And we just sat there and talked and talked and talked. And we talked about old school stuff. And Andy was very talkative about his mouth and lung and still using the high resistance and it's just you know it's refreshing when you get somebody who's old school mm. and and uh and talks whereas if, if you believed the hype you'd be stubborn in everything to point one it makes you wonder why they don't come up with proper good old school kit because apparently there isn't a market for it well obviously with with them um, all the salt nicks now. Salt nicks works really well in the older kit. If you think about it, when we came off way back in the day, because it is a long time now, I mean, it's five years for me this year. Oh, mine's 11. I don't know. You used to get 1.6 on, 1.8 on, and 2.4. They were the three coils you got because you were vaping. 12, 18, 24, 30, 40, and I came to my switch, 54 milligram Nick e -liquids. Because I was a heavy smoker, I was an 80 a day roll up smoker. So I needed high nicotine. But it's exactly as they said, mouth to lung, it was like smoking a cigarette, so it was a natural action. As I progressed, now I'm onto things like this, when I'm using drippers and stuff, I'm a direct to lung on it. I now cannot mouth to lung. I find it physically impossible to mouth to lung, whereas you've got Andy Summerfield, who's been a mouth to lung vapor from day one. Yeah. It was, it was supposed to be on, it was supposed to be coming on this evening, but he's had technical difficulties, but I will get him on. He will be on the next week or two. Technical difficulties known as he switched his computer off and refused to switch it back on again. <sighs> I know him too well. I've been begging him to come on to a show that bitches. I'll get him on. But I mean, 
this is where I think, going back to what we were saying, the pod, the pod systems are a good idea because they kind of force you back towards mouth. They do. I mean, I'm here now. I, I got this by you. I've got, I've got my saw in there. Um, I've got my aspire. I've got my uh, smock fit. No idea where they got that name from. But, um, it's got a smock fit because it fits in the dustbin quite easily. <laughs> Oddly enough, this, this, the design of the smock fit is probably one of the best ones I've seen. Because you've got a little rubber stopper on the side and you just put, put yeah. it down, squirt the juice in, push it back up again. You aren't going to take the pot out, you just bang. The bad thing is, if you pick it up and you accidentally put it in your mouth the wrong way, it, it fires and it keeps firing. Let me find it. It's, it's, uh, yeah, here you are. There's the smoke fit. So it works really well. Like I said, it's got this uh, little tab on the side. Yeah. Right there. Watch this. Oops. Slight design fault there, I think. Like like lighting the wrong end of your fag, isn't it? Really? Mm -hmm. uh, have we seen the lost vape DNA pod thing? Okay, let's I've have a look. Pictures of it. I've heard rumours of the spec, but I haven't seen the full record yet. But you see, that's a good indication of how pods are going. When you've got companies like Lost Vape doing pod systems. My only, my only annoyance is all the pods are the different sizes. Hmm. They just need a standard generic pod size. Even if it's got to fit in an adapter. Oh, I know that one of the mods that's come out recently has an adapter to put pods in, hmm. doesn't it? And you can buy different adapters. They need, to, they need to get it so it's easier for the vapors to pick up a pod. But the problem being with that is... You've got companies bringing out pod systems and they want the customers to stay loyal to them. So therefore, of course, they make their pods slightly different to somebody else's. If you make it a universal pod, then it's a free-for-all. Mm. But then again, you, if you look at um, Vaporesso and what they did with their coils, you know? Vaporesso Energy Coils and Smock, they, 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 they interchangeable. I much prefer the flavour and the price of the Vaporesso coils than the smog ones. But I mean, you look at, you can go back to the old days where we had the CE4s and the Egos. Most of the CE4s were pod systems. Designed to fit a certain thing. Then they had the CE5s that became interchangeable. But it was only certain companies that worked out, hang on, we're making the whole thing dis dis disposable. And it was Inakin that did it with the iClear 16. Pull the wicks out, replace the wick. Back in a second. Even if again. I'm, I'm, I'm determined he's going to go to the toilet before I do. Gary, to be honest, with how unlike a lot of the pod systems are, basically any pod system and i hate to admit it as much as i'm going to go to help us say it but the blue system is bloody good i think both the blue and the vape that were out this weekend they were both really good it's a brilliant little kit it's it's pocket friendly it's portable and it gets a good hit off of it and you can refill the pods I think this. I think the best. Fucking hell, that's a good coffee. I told you it's nice coffee. That's I like that one. I'm surprised, and this is my my big wonder. I'm surprised more companies haven't done. Why haven't companies done pre-filled skunk bottles? 
pre-filled mm -hmm. scum bottles. Is it legal? It's not because it's just a bottle. It could have any top on it at all, couldn't it? At the end of the day, it's a bottle of juice. It could be under 10 mil. It fits the uh, requirements of TPD. The, the, fact, the fact that you've slotted inside your squonk has no relevance. You're not buying it with it. You go in a shop and buy a pre-filled bottle. But you said that pot being interchangeable. Why are squonk systems not interchangeable? Why do they have their own way of doing it? All the different bottle sizes. You go vapor squeezer. Lovely bottle. Really powerful. Superb to use. Superb to hold. Squonk bottle. Load of weight. The way they attach the squonk bottle. Load of weight. I've got the, the Councillor Vapor Wraith in the garage. I'll nick the bottle out of that and put it in there. Completely different fitting. But no, because they want you to stay with them. They want you to keep spending money with them. The thing is, to get a unified vaping community is going to take too much money. And it's money that a lot of companies because they'd rather produce their own stuff and say, right, you're now loyal to us. And I think, I think they don't take enough feedback from the, 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 the people that are buying and the people that have bought before. People, you know, the experienced vapors that can feedback with ideas or concepts. They're more of, we're going to create this product and we're going to sell it regardless. See, up until the 510 became the standard connection were there from the mod to the pen. Mm -hmm. 808s, 901s. Exactly. Because everybody wanted their own system and they wanted that to be the one that everybody stuck to. It was only when the 510s came out, it was like, oh, we've got a universal standard, we can build to that. But to be honest, vaping is still in its infancy. We're still a very young community. We're still a very young product. And to be honest, I think I think the way it's going, it's going pods. It's not going mods, it's going pods. Good. It will be. Because from the pod systems I've tried, you're going to be more successful switching with a pod than you are going to be with a CE4 and an Ego, because I know how much of a struggle it was for me. I, when I switched, I switched overnight. I decided enough's enough. I didn't dual use. I just thought, bit in the fags, I'm going for this. That first month was absolute hell. You do still need willpower. I'm vaping away, vaping away on this CE for an ego. And it's like, okay, so I'm getting something, but I'm not getting enough. So I upped the nicotine up to 50 milligram still not getting enough which is why the first thing i did was bought an mvp2 and a northwest mini and that's what finally gave me enough to stop thinking about the facts whereas with these pod systems i've noticed the hit is stronger mm -hmm. you don't feel it's all about like the salt it's all about the salt isn't it I noticed that um, this motherfucker says you'll stick to re rebuildables. Well, this is the this is the thing. See, we are taking to the point of view that well, we've got our solution. Hmm. We're looking at people who are coming onto the scene, new vapors, who need a more robust solution. You know, we've progressed from one to another. We found what we like, but new vapors are not going to have their, that, that experience. So, especially from a bad shop or especially from a poster and even more so from a tobacco company but thinking about it from our perspective i mean we've grown grown into using these what's better to take out with you something like that or something like that and from a logistical standpoint it's them every day but the annoying thing is, why are pods so expensive when they're just teeny little bits of plastic? Because they're new. Because they're unique. You know, they need to be made cheaper. And, and instead of refilling or going on to other solutions, if Blue came up with a, if Blue came up with a new pod system, and the actual battery part was 
more expensive. See, it was double the price of a standard standard thing, but the pods were a fraction of the price. I know what I'd rather do. I had a conversation about six months ago with someone who was looking at quitting smoking and getting into vaping. And all right, I had that with me at the time. Now, the G Priv, when it came out, was 79 quid. And the Transformer, I paid 20 quid for. So you're looking at 100 quid's worth, roughly. 100 quid, that's too expensive. I'll stick to smoking. And I said to him, I said, it's 10 packets of fags. Like packets of fags. But this will last you for a lot longer. But he was more happy to spend 100 quid on 10 packets of fags than he was to spend on a modular drip. But I think nowadays, when, when, when these pod systems are out in the shops, and you can buy a decent pod system and a couple of, pack, and a couple of packs of pods for under 30 quid, Hmm. You know, you can, it's it's a no-brainer to, to say to somebody, get one of these, or you look at something like a, an Anakin kit, like a, a T20 or whatever. You buy one of them for twenty, twenty-five pound on a bottle of juice. There's your first week, possibly, yeah. at a stretch. Huh. See, Jay Jerry, you don't want a close system market. But a closed system market is where vaping needs to be to get more people off the cigarettes. Because closed systems are easier to use, easier to maintain, and undeniably cheaper than open systems. I mean, we're all, we're all pulled in different ways because we've been there, we've done that, and we've seen the best of both worlds. And what we see as hobbyists because yeah. that's what we are yeah. it's not going to be the same as what a uh, new convert needs and this is what we need to be looking at is what they need and they need pod systems and they, need a re they need a reliable device with reliable consistent juice we're Which... lucky because when we switch it's and egos and sigil -like. so the sigil -like was basically you took the cartomizer off, you put the cartomizer on, right? It then went to CE4s, which you had to unscrew the top, fill with liquid, screw it back in, leave it to set, and soak it, and then work it that way. Pod systems have gone back to how the cigar lights used to be. Pre-filled cartomizers, take them out and put them on. How much easier do you want them? Like, people these days do not have to sit there and fill up CD soak and all that and hope the batteries charge well. All they've got to do is charge the battery and away they go. When the pod's empty, a bit and sort of keep running. I was looking for something I received the other day. Basically, I had something which is the... Uh, it's an, an Enjoy starter kit. And you get an Enjoy battery. And they do pre-filled CE4s. No faffing, pre they are sealed. But it's not ideal for someone that's just switched because it's the equivalent of taking a fag out of the packet, sticking it in your mouth and lighting yeah. it. But like Kevin, Kevin Smith in, in chat uh, mm. has just scrolled up says, um, give me two 8650s and RDA any day over the week, over a pod. Yes, but that's because you've already come off the cigarettes. If somebody, came, if somebody came along tomorrow and took off all your mods and stuff and you just add um, a decent pod system, you wouldn't go back to smoking. You'd stick with the pod system. Let's ask the obvious question. Kevin, do you consider yourself a vapor or a hobbyist? Looking at the equipment you're using now and the equipment you've got, are you a vapor or are you a hobbyist? And I suppose this is also where the line blurs because some people just go straight into these big kits. Hmm. They don't go to start off on like a pen kit and then move up to I mean, like other things. I'll give you the example. Gary. Gary F. My good friend Gary who was bankrupted several times over. He's a hobbyist because he sees a mod he likes, he goes and buys it, he then tries it, decides he doesn't like it and then gets rid of it. Hmm. But he's into the hobby of picking up 
the new stuff. Same as Kevin just admitted, he's a hobbyist. Most papers will be quite happy with the pod system because all they want to do is get off the fags. And they want to use that pod or whatever, drop the nicotine if they can, and get off of it completely and walk away. It's only people like us that have decided that we don't want to quit nicotine. We want to keep going or we want to use zero milligram because we like the flavours who are the hobbyist side of the of the community. The clouds, the clouds, bro, the clouds. Yeah, and this is where I think the vaping industry is going wrong because they are marketing their products to the hobbyists rather than the vapors. And do you know what? Going on to that point as well, you know, um, Dimitri and Phil. You know they've got they've got a they've got a show mm. every week. All it's called the Smoker Show. Yeah, that is the kind of attitude and mindset that we need to be winding back in again. You know, looking at these this you know these sort of solutions for people who are smoking. You know. Um, I know it sounds, in a way it sounds wrong, but like, there's 20 watching now, I would rather, okay, it, it does sound wrong, I would rather be 20 smokers watching this show right now, mm. than, tw than, than 20 vapors. Not that we don't, we don't appreciate the not that, Yeah, not that we don't want you and we don't watch the numbers disappear now as we're talking, mm. but that should be the incentive to get people, yeah. get smokers engaged. And pod systems do engage smokers. Yes. These, these don't. Some, a lot of smokers will look at this and think, what the, you know, a tank and whatever, what, what is that? Why do I need that? Why have I got to spend all this money on that? Hmm. Whereas a smoker will be like, okay, well, maybe I'll try and change over. There's the money aspect. And there's also, like Chris said, when he started, he was always a bit paranoid when he was with his, um, in a kin kit, vaping thing, because he always thought of vapors looking a bit douchish and, and you know, when people blow clouds, they can do. Um, but you know, there is a, there is this stigma about vaping as well. Yes. And I will be honest, a lot of the stigmas that have been attached to vaping are deserved. Because there's been a big thing in the media over the last week or so about relaxing the rules to allow vaping on trains and on buses. No. Cause, Sorry, cause don't you, agree with it. Because you know there's always going to be that one person who goes in that vaping carriage and just clouds it out. There's going to be that yeah. one also who comes up with his double stack mech and his fucking 30 mil RDA and it looks like fucking a pea super from the 1800s by the time you've done one stop. And you've also got the ones that would have stinky fucking flavors and stuff like that and it's just wrong and they're going to be in the same carriage that new vapors think oh it's a vapors carriage i could i could have my pod kit and have a, a couple of totes yeah and they end up in a carriage with somebody blowing big clouds with rank, rank juice and this is the other thing with in public as well if you walk around a town center you're always guaranteed to find he's a fucking smoke machine admittedly sometimes i do that i've done it before i'll admit it but my local shopping center had a, up until recently had a vape, vape shop inside that's now moved to the outside so the shopping center management allowed vaping in there the amount of heat they took from smokers well if they can go in there and do it why can't we and this is the thing, I know we're trying to keep smoking and vaping separate, but when it comes to shopping centres, public places, enclosed and stuff like that, I do believe that vapors should be treated exactly the same as smokers because it makes people who are not smokers and who are not vapors uncomfortable. Although I do like going out into the smoking shelters and blowing a couple of nice Ar ar aromatic clouds which just gets the smokers thinking oh that smells nice but that's another thing smoking shelters under health and safety law vapors are not supposed to be put with smokers because you're actually risking the vapors health yeah i i get that but i i prefer to be an evangelist 
you know, because you never know. There could be one person in under, in, you know, out in that shelter thinking, "Oh, what's that? I'm interested. Maybe I'll. Can I try that?" My absolute favourite is when you stand there and you have a vape and you blow out a cloud, no matter how big it is, and the smoker standing next to you starts coughing. But the last time it happened, I looked at the bloke and I just went, "Fuck." I said, I could tell you exactly why you're looking like a complete dickhead now, but I don't want to waste my breath. And he looked at me and walked off. And I, thought, okay, fair I think we got away with the uh, the comment about 20 vapors and smokers anyway, because they're all still here. Yeah, well, they've got nothing better to do at fucking one o'clock in the morning, you know. Yeah. One o'clock? So we've kind of rolled over an extra hour. We're giving them their money's worth. We I mean, have, yeah. Paid to come in. And I know a lot of the people in the room now would be here till two, three, four in the morning. Because I know, because when I move from here to another show, to to I vlog, a lot of the regulars just move. You know. Here's the thing: there's twenty people in here who haven't paid to be here, and not one of them is asked. You're shaking your fist at the TV. Actually, I've got something. I've got something for this motherfucker. Uh, where is it? Oh, I got one of them. There we are. Fresh one for you. He's coming back. I have to wind mine up. Uh, <laughs> I'm old school. I'm still mechanical. Just here for the gym. <laughs> well, Lobby Three, the Revenge. Yeah, that still, makes me, that still makes me laugh in my head just thinking about that boat. Oh, M sixteen's got the double val double barrel version. There is, there is actually an emoticon for that, but I'm not going to tell. People. <laughs> Vapin Smith says he sees the streams as keeping away from fast tech and gear best. Sorry, sorry you shouldn't be on fast tech and gear best, you should be sort of supporting UK vendors. That's another thing that does about this community. We don't support our own, we go to China. There's a reason that vape gear is expensive in this country. It's called tax. If you want to try and avoid it. Tax is one thing, but there is also greed. I think there are a lot of greedy vape shop owners. Like the one that you didn't get to see at Tower Hill, which if you do let me know you were coming a bit sooner, I would have taken you to. They tried setting a coal fire for Mini and Nautilus 2 for a hundred. And he was so proud of his pricing, he actually put it in the window. And your dinner lady juices were £20 for 30 mil. Mm. Yeah, all right, it's cheaper from China, but how long have you got to wait for it to turn up unless you pay for expedited shipping? I think that's, I think with people who are hobbyists, they are, they are willing to wait and there's usually a constant stream of buy-in bits and wait for them to arrive at the door. You see, I consider myself a hobbyist, but I spend very little. But if it's something that you want there and now, hmm. like like if I, if I need pods, I'm not going to order pods online, I will find a shop to buy them from. Hmm. Or like um, Mark's new FP. I've, I've ordered, I ordered that because I didn't want to wait for the clones proper reviewer he would have sent you one. Exactly, but you know, there we are. I'm not after the free shit. But, oh, oh, I'm a, that must mean I'm a proper reviewer. My thing is, I, if I want anything, I'll put, first place I'll go is like the one I want every time. Because I know Tony and I know he'll price match anybody in the UK. Mm. And I can have it here within two days. And his, and his prices are really good as well. Yeah, anyway. I mean, literally the maximum it takes to get here is two days. I think it was 101 that I saw the other day, they had um, 
The V Boys for thirty nine ninety nine. They had both of them. You see, the thing with Tony at one on one is the fact that if somebody in the UK is selling it cheaper, he won't even think about it. He will price match anybody if you can supply proof. And that's the that's where it goes from. Uh... Which is why he's always out of stock because everybody yeah. will have... That's where it goes from good vape shop owners to the greedy ones. I know people who are still selling the Call Fire 2 for thirty nine ninety nine. Was the two the one that looked like hand grenade? Hand grenade. They're still selling it for thirty nine ninety nine. You can pick them up for a fiver each. Got a link there? As you, as you can tell, I never used to have a life on Saturdays. I used to sit in front of the computer finding the cheapest prices in the UK. So where is where do you get these uh, cheap go fires then? That would be telling. Uh, I only let people buy them for their history cabinets now. I don't let them buy them, buy them to use. I like the double pun there. Empty it, empty it, empty it out. You've got other history cabinet. Yeah, I don't wanna. It's like me, when I put that stuff together to give to you to give to Jay. Mm. There's one mod missing out of that bag and it's a mod I My MVP too, because it was the one that got me off the back, same as my Nautilus Mini. I'll never let it go. I got mine up the shed. I tell you what. Gary, I'm not telling you where to get anything cheap. You pay full price. You deserve to suffer. After I back you up over balloon That's all right. Let me know if you want any more G classes. I can get them cheap. The thing I will say to all of you in chat: Google is your friend. If you look for a mod or anything like that. If you're prepared to go through three or four pages of results, you can normally find stuff dirt cheap that's what I ever used to do. But it's always a case of looking out for the sales because they're not as appetizing as they used to be, but you could always guarantee that somebody somewhere was having a sale. I love my Max, my old school Max, my Max with springs, but particularly the ones with side firing buttons. It's not a true method, it's got slightly. This mod. is Smock's mm -hmm. best ever mod. That you is. Know what their best ever mod? They can paint it so the paint doesn't fall off. That's, <laughs> that's the Smock, Smock Natural. Mm. Fantastic thing. Although I need a new Delrin for it. But there, Smock, one of Smock's best ever mods. You are. Here's another one. That's one of Sigali's best ever mods. I still don't like Slide Virus, I'm sorry. I do. I, li I like the I like, uh, convenience. That new purge, right, is a gorgeous mod, except for that plastic fucking fire button on the side. Yeah, the, the, the smock is. Uh, if you look at the, the natural. The way they've got the cap at the bottom, you've got the cap with the insulator, then you've got the metal bar, and then you've got the nut which touches the bar to make the contact. Hmm. That's no spring, that is it. That's, uh, and you've got to remember that this is where a lot of companies started with Max. I think a lot of companies should have stayed with Max. Post it up in chat. <laughs> 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 
No, if if somebody found there's a link coming up in chat. If anybody wants a lot, I suggest you click on it. I would pay fifty pounds for a brand new natural, not the magneto one. If they found one of these, mm. I, I would love to get a new one of these. Do a Google search; you'd be surprised. No, the uh, smock shop co UK did have some older stuff, but I missed it. And then, then that's. It was regulars. I used to always go there. Mm. But they started doing a lot of Inican stuff now. Smock shop. <laughs> but that link that Kerak has just put in chat is to a call for a tone. And yes, they are truly trying to sell for that price. Wow. So if anybody's got a call cool fire too. And that's a, I think it's a 30S on the top? Or 16S? Probably a 16S. I didn't actually look, I just Still, I know I can reach over to the drawer and I know I've got one of them in my drawer. There. I like the starter kit. It's a 30B. It's a... Uh... Three mil capacity, so it's not TPD compliant. Damn. <laughs> yep, hand grenade. UK e six store were knocking call fire twos out for nine ninety nine each, and they had over four hundred of them in stock. See, that's that's another place when they have a clear out. You definitely want to take a look at UK e six store because some of their prices drop right through the floor. And there was the other deal I saw the other week for the uh, the E Leaf Tria it was sixteen quid. Cracking little three battery mod. What makes me laugh? There's a Facebook group and a website, UK Vape Bargains. You go on there and they say, yeah, they've got this mod for this price. You click on it. Where does it go? Gear best, fast tech. Say goodbye. So how's it a UK bargain site when you're buying them from fucking China? Why don't they call it what it is? Chinese bargain. Or Chinese great bargain. I had this. Uh, I had a new mod interview today. Um, Nice looking mod. It looks a bit like a diamond, but it's got an unusual pattern on it. Hmm. Unfortunately, they decided they wanted to call it the Aegis. Enjoy that one, Geek Vape. Um, who fancies a smog, a smog magneto? I've got one of them. Somebody sent me one. You can still buy them on Amazon, twenty nine ninety nine each. If you know where to look, you know the search terms to use, you can find pretty much anything. No. And yet, funny, we are still here. And Smock Shop used to do a, uh, used to have a clearance section, didn't they, as well? That's gone. This is the thing. When I used to do steals and deals on a Saturday, I had a notepad file on my desktop. I had 74 vendors that all had clearance sections, sales sections, and stuff like that. And I used to go through each one of them every week. That list is now down to about 12 because they just don't put the sales sections or the clearance sections on anymore. They are lost. Of those 12, three of them are still selling the same stuff cheap that they were selling cheap when I used to because they still haven't cleared them. I think it is Bill actually. I think it's quite uh, protruded. Hopefully, might will be here for the end of the week. Oh, hang on, she's found another one. Another 
cool fire too. And how much is this one? Nine ninety five, a tenth of the price. Nine dollars ninety five. Although it's probably just a little bit more uh, shipping. Yes. Free shipping for orders over fifty dollars. That's probably just states. The Aspire Zelos starter kit, fifty nine dollars ninety five. And how much is it in the UK? Thirty nine pound ninety. interesting uh, yeah. my best ever steal and deal now you've got me thinking have a think and I'll just point out that if you go to smockshop.com they've got dinner lady 310 mils for 299 195 delivery it's not bad I think my best stealing deal ever was a double stack mech mod on custom vapes website but they've reduced it from 399 quid down to 49.99 to clear them out and i think that was one episode where we sold out 30 of them in 45 minutes because everybody dived on it but the thing with the thing with steals and deals was and a lot of people don't realize it a lot of those steals and deals lists were stacked because i used to deliberately put in stuff that i knew would provoke debate that i knew would piss aries off that i knew would piss vic off that i knew would piss both of them off at the same time and i used to throw little deliberate ones in but on the other hand i also used to find absolute steals that were unbelievable and if i'd have had the money at the time i would have bought yes the fact that we used to crash certain vendors websites every week and of course the, the times that i used to find stuff on totally wicked website Yeah, well, actually, that that um, e leaf tree offer is still on. Bill, you don't remember when I found the G classes for ninety nine ninety nine? <coughs> we wondered why, because they were a hundred quid off. But no, if you want, if you're prepared to spend the time, you can find stuff. Virtually. It's a case of sitting down and spending the time to do it and a lot of people don't want to do that they just want to go to a site and buy it and bugger off you still haven't forgotten that gary have you bless you he wanted that limelight bless him and he never got one But people used to say to me, they used to say, Do you, is it not a chore? To be honest, yes it was, but it was enjoyable watching people's reactions. That's why I used to love doing that show, because you used to watch people's reactions, you used to have a laugh and have a good time. I mean, will TBC come back? No. Will Steals and Deals come back? Maybe. Mm -hmm. you, never, you never know but I know for a fact TBC will never come back because that show is dead because you couldn't recreate what we had yeah. if anybody out there watching does find a deal feel free to post it in the uh, VUKN Facebook group yes you know if you find a deal you know let other people know about it But you see, you have to be careful saying that. Gary wants his wife beats the crap out. It's like that post, that, that picture I put in a couple of weeks, with a guy with a big gash in his face, saying this wasn't uh, this wasn't a mech mod blown up. This was 
the beat that he had off his wife when she found out the price of his mech. You see, it's so easy for me to find deals. If anybody's after a mech, there you go. Cloud Kicker Society, Fuji mech, 24mm. From custom bikes was one hundred and ninety-nine. Now seventy-nine ninety-nine. Solid, dependable mech. All right, you don't get the dripper with it. It's just the mech. It's just the mod itself. But literally, like I say, if you know where to look, you can find them easy. And custom bikes is one of those ones. They do get a lot of high-end stuff that they knock out fairly cheap. Every now and then. I think in 101 has got the Sugali Fuchai for 29.99. That's it. But the thing that's really being cleared out cheap at the moment is squat mods. Because a lot of people have seen, oh crap, they're about to be banned, so they're all knocking them out dirty. I think it's, you, can, you can pick up a pulse for. Five ten quid fairly easily these days, or a full kit for twenty quid. I mean, Gary, Gary, if you're if you're that upset by custom vapes, I could find you somewhere else. <laughs> I could quite easily find you another shop. Gary, you after a new dripper? To fit on one of your capacious mods that you've got. If you're after a dripper, there you go. Oh, well, that's a cracker, I gotta say. A vicious ant, though. There's a link for the uh, Hot CR200. Now that vicious ant dripper I've just put up was seventy-five quid. They're knocking them out at forty-nine ninety-nine to get them clear. So that's twenty-five quid saving. Off a bloody good dripper. Well, it's not necessarily a saving, is it? Because you end up buying it. This is where this is where the, this is where the hobbyist side comes in, and it. You know, if something is cheap, you'll buy it. Not necessarily because you need it or want it, but because it's a bargain. It's a vicious ant. Everybody should have a vicious ant. A squad radar. I've also got the Kanga K pin minis reduced from twenty four ninety nine down to fifteen quid. Talking about pod systems and small and small kits, absolutely perfect for a new starter. <laughs> no bill, that's extra. If you, if you really want me to produce a steals and deals list every week, I'd more than happily oblige. Produce, produce a steals and deals show, what? No, no, produce a list, because if I don't do it as a show, it can be as big as I want it to be. So if I wanted to hit Gary with three deals all at the same time, I could. But he's going to know that you were targeting him then, didn't he? He never worked out I was targeting him when we did it on the show. <laughs> when I used to deliberately go out and find what you he wanted. When he used to bitch on Facebook, oh, I can't find one cheap enough, so I used to find one for him. The number of people that complained at me, you've emptied my wallet out. No, you emptied your wallet out. I just, just, I just, I'm not guilty. You hit the buy now button. Yes, I didn't force you to take your card out or load your PayPal account up and click the buy now button. <laughs> Gary, Gary, how many mutual friends have we got? Are you going to ban or block every single one of them? <laughs> Are you? I don't think so. This is, this just goes on to show up. This is for us, 
for nearly everybody in the room. This is a this is a hobby. Yes. I think you're right, and I think it's something we need to to actually start providing shows, providing something for the other end of the market. And it's something I will be looking into over the next month or so to see what we can do. Because we need, we need to bring you. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the audience we've got, but I love it to be bigger. Well, most of them. <laughs> Bill, if I put my mind to it, I could come up with a lot worse than that, believe me. Because I've stopped. Where you start seeing metals reduced from a thousand pounds down to something sensible. Exactly. That's a definition of a bargain in there. Something you don't need for a price that you can't refuse. But the thing being is, if you've got a thousand pound mech mod reduced to two hundred, that tells you roughly how much they cost trade price. So why would they charge in a thousand quid price? But they're not that obviously leads you to want to buy it because it's eight hundred quid off. See, one that I keep posting in the UKN group at the moment, and they're not cheap, but they are bloody well engineered and they're really lovely, is the Terminix stuff that Scotty Bonner does. Because they are beautiful mods. Because they will last. Apart from that, Scotty Bonner's a lovely bloke and deserves our support for what he's given to the community. Yeah, he's a he's a nice bloke. I, I can remember speaking to him at Vape Fest years ago, and he, he took he took time to, to chat to me. He was on the way to the toilet as well. But he, One of the very rare public appearances. Yeah. He did have his entourage with him. Gary, Gary, the number of times you came into tea. <laughs> I always remember one, there was a, a mech mod that they, they bought out, it made out of meteorite. And to be honest, it looked gorgeous. But I'm thinking, what's the practicality on it, really? It's still a mech mod, why? Why can't it just be made of a metal tube like everything else? <laughs> Gary, that's funny. Mm -hmm. You can't put deals like that up with drunk people in the room and not expect them to buy. Yes. That's why we that's why you need to work out the timing of the show, so it's gotta be Saturday night after twelve o'clock when people come in drunk. You see you could actually say that I was responsible for the around Lakers. Because I used to get people spending money and their wives used to find out. They used to end up in the poorhouse for a few months. But at the time, nobody was doing it. It was a fresh idea and it took off. Now it's old hat and every fuck is doing it. Same as when we did the images with TBC. Brilliant idea until the ideas started up and you couldn't produce new ones every week because there was no way you could go. I'm trying to find something which I had before. There was a shop, a vape shop, which basically would do custom receipts to show the price that you wanted your wife to find. Um, have you seen Bill Burns' comment in chat? He's done a grand on vape gear in the last five weeks. Yeah. He's, 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 he's not a hobbyist. I think he's actually trying to stop the shop that he hasn't opened yet. I think a lot of it's going on in 16 million feet of uh, wire as well. No, it's not that. I put a deal up with the G-Class. He bought, I think it was three or four of them. It's like that was one for each hand and one for each foot, you know. He goes through a lot of wire. 
But again, Coyle's, you know, that's, that's um, hobbyist. Yeah. This is the thing that a lot of papers don't want to get into making their own coils. They don't give a shit. Yeah, but at the end of the day... See, we know when it comes to flavour, you get the best flavour off an RDA. There are very few tanks that will give you RDA-type flavour. The majority of vapors don't give a shit. They just literally fill up a tank and go. That's it. I wonder how many of the 21,000 people in the room now have got some kind of pod system to hand. Or, or an ego setup or something really basic that would do them just as well. I've just noticed something. She's going to sleep. No, no, no. Oh. We've been going a while. Mm -hmm. We've got 16 upvotes and we haven't got one down vote. We did have one, but I think it was a, a joke. We should have 20, that, you know, pe people in the room need to be clicking that thumb up. Yeah, the problem being is, you see, you won't get a thumbs up out of Bill Byrne or Gary because they don't like me because I cost them money. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> and her, her scene doesn't give up, folks, because he's a tight bastard. I mean, there's, there's one person out there watching. Could be a smoker, could be a not a smoker. Yeah, this is the thing, see, I know. I don't care. So, Vaping Smurf, why don't you use your ego anymore? Is it because of the array, array of stuff you got? You know, flush it out, stick some juice in it, and give it a bash. Yeah, but like I say, the problem is if you direct a lung in for a certain amount of time, it's very difficult to go back to mouth lung. Ah, there we are. M16. Oh, we've got some downvotes now. Well, you know where they are, don't you? Harry, <coughs> Harry, he's just thumbed you and you didn't even flinch. Uh, hardened, hardened to it, see? That's what 11 years do, does to you. That Smurf just said it. He can't mouth the lung. People who do direct to lung can't mouth the lung now. Because you've got so used to the action of direct taking it in, you can't stop it in your mouth and then inhale it. Because a lot of these systems we use are too airy. You need a very restricted airflow to do mouth to lung. You can't do it on stuff like this. Well, we've been going for three and a half hours now. Yep. Should we make it to the end of the hour or should we uh, wind it up? Oh, I'd she says get off and I'm thinking it's up to you it's your shot <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be a good time to uh, call it a day we... ooh rubbish get off <sighs> you didn't have the balls to come on even though you were invited she does have she does have the balls but they're currently attached to you and I use the word currently I think you should change your chat name Summerfield. Because Andy Summerfield's a pussy that hit and didn't come on as well. I've been talking. Don't, don't worry, Andy. We all get stage fright, mate. Don't need to look at me. So there we go. Uh, good show. Really enjoyable discussion about uh, the show, stroke non show. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. It was great to have you on. So, uh, big thumbs up for London Vapor. Get ready for his uh, new show coming soon. Yeah, you wish. Uh, I'll just have to keep it bringing you on here. That's what I have to do. I don't review anymore. I don't cast anymore because. Are you call it the Gary and Bill Bagwell I'm just, show? I'm just not there anymore. I'm not part of the community. Just you can just do a half hour show and show and call it Wallet Whacker. Try being married to her, you wouldn't fucking say that, trust me. <laughs> I do not know why I got married. I may as well have gone out, found a woman I couldn't stand, and bought records. I do that. Been married 14 years this year, and I still can't remember breaking two mirrors. <laughs> well, 
Right. I'm thinking I got screwed because I paid that bloke to elbow her in the head. I hope that it reset her brain. Didn't work. <sighs> There you go. I'll be up really early in the morning to see if you posted. See if she hasn't smothered you in your smothered you in your sleep. People find it strange that we're still married. They don't realise how our marriage works. Our marriage survives by us taking the piss out of each other. So yeah, we'll uh, wind it up there. Catch you next week. I won't be. Uh, unless, unless there's a flash show in between. Who knows? You never. Know. You never know when it just crops up from nowhere. This could end up to be a regular thing of just Chunk and I talking shit for several hours. But it keeps them off the streets. That's the end of the day. And I'm sure like we'll run out of shit to talk about. Nah, nah. I've been, I've been doing it for long enough. Sixteen. We've got separate beds. Mine's in London, and in Birmingham. <laughs> she hasn't quite got there yet. A broomstick's broken down. We're waiting for the repairman. Fuck off. <laughs> oh dear. She's an elitist witch, but she has got a broomstick. She's got a fucking Dyson. <sighs> Say goodnight, Chuck. We better, we better leave it there. I think we leave it there while you're still alive. Um, yeah, I can see an elbow coming from behind you. I can't be no, asked. she's not tall enough. <laughs> she can't be asked. Anyway, okay, everybody, um, catch you next week. Uh, don't forget, plenty of other shows on. Uh, get on for the uh, Bitches on Friday. Yep. And um, catch you later. Vegetable rights and peace. Yeah, man. Nice one, Neil. <laughs> cool. Good night, people. So this is where we can talk crap again. We just talk a bit more crap. So fuck off now, he can't hear us. Oh, Gary. Yeah, Fuck, fucking typical jock. Doesn't that want to shut the fuck up? They're fucking annoying, aren't they? Huh. Anyway. And that's for that her scene wanker. Nice dicky, <laughs>